when he showed me his savings turned the phone around because remember I, I demonstrated for y'all how he was and then exactly. you know showed it turned it around and showed it to me as if he was signing in when he did that he was he was simply showing me a screenshot that he had taken from google images that he girl, showed girl he fooled you with google images girl he played you like a fiddle with google and google images and was living a good life yes then moved up into your place if you if you present yourself like a sucker yes you're gonna, gonna get, get lit. lit what's, what's up y'all my name is nick rochelle and i am carla rochelle and we are a married couple on this channel we share our genuine reactions to some of the hottest content on youtube so if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you click that subscribe button. And if you want to join the membership to our channel and become one of our little freaks, hit the join button for exclusive perks. Without further ado, shout out to the members of our channel. All right, so we back. We back from my trip, honey. Y'all told that uh, last video up, five mm -hmm. hours. They watched it fast as hell. Yeah, they said we are not playing. But some people did. They took their time. They watched it at work. It got them through their shift faster, <laughs> stuff like that. But uh, tonight, we're actually going to be sipping on wine. I'm not going to do the Casamigas because I don't want to get too crazy with it. She already done got a feeling hurt with Charlemagne. There was a person, a very famous personality that called me a big bag. Yes. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I hear a lot of big back behavior. Does she have a big back? She do. She do give Sheila. Big back belief mm -hmm. isn't like everybody else's belief. Mm -hmm. Okay, she said it herself. He mm -hmm. said everything I wanted to hear. Yeah. She wanted to believe whatever was she coming out of his mouth because she wanted a man so bad. And oh yeah. You know. So I just want to try to you know be as respectful as possible. And the Casamigas, I can't be that respectful. And T. S. Madison did not like that, honey. Oh, she didn't? Honey, she didn't like when he said that wide back behavior. T.S. Madison, a self-proclaimed big backer, um, she publicly <laughs> checked in on the rest of the big back brigade to see how she should respond. And she said, hashtag big back people, including me. <laughs> Y'all letting Charlemagne get away with that? Or are we caving his face in? Let me know. Oh, really? I didn't even know that. Yeah. Shout out to um, a funny acting black girl. I got my Pisces uh, shirt from uh, them. Really nice quality. Go check them out. Funny acting black girl on all platforms. Part 33, who the fuck did I marry? June 17th, 2021. So, you guys have been on this ride. You now know exactly what information I did have. The morning of June 17th, which was his birthday. Um, he was in the bed as usual. Power aid bottles all over the place because I wasn't in the mood to clean. Um, and so I went in his room. He was awake. He was watching YouTube on his cell phone. He watched a lot of YouTube watching um, these two guys that always were, always were fixing jeeps on youtube um and if i saw them i would know exactly who they are but i can't remember their name it's a popular show on youtube anyway so i go in there and i, I just calmly sit on the edge of the bed and i was like can we talk and he was like yeah what's up i said to him i said legion obviously i called him the same legion i said i'm gonna ask you something i just want you to be honest with me so he starts, I can already see in his eyes, he's about to get defensive. And I was like, calm. Because this, this is the tone I had. Calm. I said, um, you never went to San Diego State, did you? He rolls his eyes and he's like, I already, I said, calm down. Watch your tone. <laughs> I said, you never went to San Diego State. I said, you never lived in California, did you? And he said, of course I lived in California. He's like, I fucking showed you the house I had in California. He said, I told you about San Diego State. I was a private citizen. My dad paid for me to be a private citizen. And I said... Okay. I said, I called San Diego State. And he looked at me. His eyes were like empty. Like he wasn't shocked. He wasn't like, oh my God. He was just more like, okay. I said, they have no record of you. I said, they have no record because you never went. You never been to California. So at this point, I'm very calm and I'm just stating, I said, you never been to California. I said, I bet you've only lived in Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. At this point, now there's, there's a little emotion behind the eyes. And I said, I don't think that this is going to work. And he said, what, the marriage? He was like, so what you saying? You, you don't want to be married to me anymore? And I said, I don't want to be married to you anymore. Mm. I said, we need to go our separate ways. We tried, but we need to go our separate ways. The way that I- How do you feel about the way she approached him? I think she did good. Okay. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with it, but when she said we tried, no baby, you tried. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he I'm, didn't try. I don't know. I almost wonder, I almost <coughs> wish she had, I mean, I almost wonder if she had more of a strategy behind it or is it just, 
I'm going to go in there, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to see how he reacts. No, I'm pretty sure she did her little woo-saw. Mm -hmm. That's how come she said, I was calm like this. Mm -hmm. So when he was trying to get hype, she was like, calm down. Mm -hmm. But she already was like, I'm finna lay this on the table. I don't care That's what, what he said. Yeah. How he tried to wiggle out of it. talking mm -hmm. to you all is exactly how I was talking to him. Um, and so he was like, that's not what marriage is. Marriage is, you know, you, you, you have to fight for what you want. I said, I don't want this. And I don't want to fight for it. I said, I don't want you. And I don't want this. And so he was like, I'm not giving up on the two of us. I said, you don't have a choice. I said, I think that you should call your brother or your sister now. And I think that you need to pack a bag. And I think you need to get the fuck out of my house. Oh. And he was like, you know, I don't really have time for this. You know, I don't feel well. I said, I don't care. You need to get out of my house. Again, the way I'm, I know y'all are going to be like, she's so dramatic. And in real, I am actually a very dramatic person. But the way that I'm talking to you guys on this video is exactly how I was talking to him in the beginning of how this started. So I said, you need to call your brother um, or call your sister because she's, she's in Douglasville. And you need to go stay there. You need to get out of this house today. <sighs> Basically, what happened was um, at first he refused. He wasn't moving fast enough for me. Um, and so he called his aunt and his aunt was on speakerphone. Let me preface that. She was on speakerphone. And so she was like, you know, what's going on? And he was like, my wife don't want me no more. She, she claimed that I'd be lying to her. I ain't never lied to her. When I heard this, what's the analogy I can give y'all? When I heard him say to his aunt, I ain't never lied to her before. Something in me snapped. The best Ooh. analogy I can give you. Do y'all remember that movie, Carrie? When she yeah. was at the prom and everyone was laughing at her. Um, the blood had, drip, had fallen down on her. Mm -hmm. And there was a moment where her eyes just went wild. And you knew something was about to happen. You just didn't know what. But y'all had pushed her too far. When he said to his aunt, I ain't never lied to her. I snapped. The calmness left. The amount of rage that was in me. I could have fought every member of the Kansas City Chiefs and beat every last one of their asses. <laughs> I could have fought every member on the Atlanta Falcons and beat every last one of their asses. I'm not a violent person, but I was, I was, I was there. That statement, I ain't never lied to her, took me there. I went off. I, w I went off. I went off so bad that I, first of all, every part of me was shaking. I called my mom. My mom was on speakerphone and she's in Arkansas. My mom's a praying woman. I was cussing like a sailor. My mom finally said, um, you know, put him on the phone. So I gave him the phone and I'm standing there and I'm looking around the room. It's, it's the scene that I remember is the Angela Bassett scene in Waiting to Exhale when her eyes are darting around the room right before she grabs everything to put it in the car to set it on fire. I was more so looking at what weapons were in the room, the lamp, the TV, the dresser. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was looking, I mean, I was while she was talking to him, my eyes were darting around the room because if he did not get his ass up and get his shit, and get up out of my house. Um, it, it was it was going to be bad. If I have never in my life been on TikTok and said thank, if had it not been for the blood, y'all, I'm I I can't. I know this is gonna sound dramatic. I know this is gonna sound like, girl, you you so funny. You don't understand. Had it not been for the Lord on my side, had it not been for the fact that. I know I got a praying mother. I know I had a praying aunt. I know I've had a praying grandmother in heaven because I'm telling you, I clearly saw what was getting ready to happen had he not gotten up, got his shit and got out of my house. So I'm trying to calmly say this because I'm trying to calmly tell this story because the rage had taken over me. The pure unadulterated rage that I felt when he said to his aunt, I ain't never lied to her after I had discovered only 2% of the lies at that point, just 2%. So yeah. it was enough for me to be like, you need to get your stuff and go. So my mother gets on the phone and she says to him, you know, Legion, she called him by name. Um, she said, I am not there to control my daughter. She said, in the name of Jesus, get yourself and get out of that house because I think she might kill you. Get out of the house. She's mm -hmm. on my phone. His aunt is on his phone. His aunt said, nephew, come home. Home for her was Philly. She said, I'll send you money. Come home. Leave that house right now, she said, because I think that that woman is about to kill you. Mm. let's go let's just go to part 34 let's all just take a deep breath <laughs> no <laughs> because it's like sometimes you can hear a certain level of like anger in someone's voice that is not normally them you ever yeah. hear stories where 
They say it looked like their eyes turned black and they just like that, they like they were no longer there anymore. Yeah. 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 It was just, she was filled with anger and yeah, rage. I think not only was she mad at him, she was mad at herself. She was mad. Yes. At multiple things. Yeah. And the fact that he said that. Yeah. It just set off. Yeah. Before who the fuck did I marry? So the aunt told him. I'll send you money. Come home. And I'm yelling in the background, by the way. I'm not sitting there calmly. I'm yelling. I said, oh, he got money. Yeah, you got money. You got money in that offshore account, right? You got money in that Chase account. You got money to drive. So do what you got to do. I, I told him, and I'm not going to repeat some of the stuff I said because my mom is this TikTok. But um, I did tell him, I was like, if you don't get out of this house, you gonna, actually what I said was, you have two options. You either going to leave this house voluntarily or you're going to leave this house involuntarily. And he tried to get a little, he tried to get a little nugget if you buck. He tried. And that's when he, because he was still on the bed, still laying in the bed. And he was just like, you ain't going to do shit. Like, don't talk to me like you done lost your fucking mind. Da, da, da. And I calmly got close to him. I got like this close. And I literally said, I will beat you like the bitch you are. I dare oh. you to try me. I said, I will literally beat you like the male bitch you are. And so when I said that, his eyes were like, I said, I'm not even playing. Because at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm rocking like back and forth. Y'all, again, I'm not some hardened type chick. I'm not. I want the soft lifestyle. But I have been pushed to the point. So I'm rocking. I'm walking back. I'm pacing. So finally, his aunt was able to get through to him. I had called my, aunt, my mother, my aunt. I had called the pastor. I had called all these people because I did know that I was in a very dangerous place. Not because I'm scared of yeah. him. At this point, I was scared of me. I don't know if this has ever happened to someone Facts. where you know your own, you know yourself. You know that you got a line. I was over that line. So I had enough wherewithal to be like, okay, okay, you're probably going to go to jail today. You're probably going to go to jail. Um, you're probably going to have that job in the morning. Like I, I was there. And again, this is not to sound bragging at all. This was this was a woman who I, I could not believe that even with the the attempt of me trying to give him one last opportunity to tell me the truth, he still lied in my face. I, I was at my edge. So I pulled, I yanked the covers back and um, I told him, I was like, get up, you know, get, get the fuck out of my house. Again, I'm saying it calmly on here. It was nothing calm in the house when this happened. So I'm throwing stuff throwing stuff up against the wall um I, I remember i looked at the lamp he looked he looked at me looking at the lamp and i think that's i think something in him realized okay I, I, yeah i'm in pain but if i don't get up she, she's going to do something with that lamp so he does get up he is still on the phone with the aunt because the aunt was pretty much like keep me on the phone she did not want him to hang up <sighs> He throws some stuff together. Again, keep in mind, he has all his stuff in the house. So he basically packed like two bags worth of clothes. Um, and he's limping around. And I'm standing in the hallway watching him like a probation officer. So he's limping around. Um, and I'm looking at the condition of the bedroom. This is when I noticed Legion had been semi-bedridden. Remember I told y'all that because the knee and other stuff. I look at these bottles of Powerade because he had been drinking Powerade so much at this point. Oh, look. Let me guess. He been pissing in the Powerade bottles. Let me guess. Let me guess that's what his stinking ass, truck driving looking ass been doing. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see if she finna say this. He was not getting up to go to the bathroom. He was drinking the Powerade and then using the empty bottles to pee in. Nasty, stinking truck driving looking ass. I know a truck driver when I see one. That he, that's what he look like. And now she got to so clean about this six shit. bottles around the bed and i was like what is this because again i hadn't really been going in that room i was busy being cia fbi and homeland security for the past two weeks so i was like what is this he was like i'm gonna throw it out he grabbed the trash bag put the bottles in there and i said what are in those bottles i said tell me and i said i think i started like twitching like tell me there that is not piss in those bottles he was like i couldn't make it to the bathroom i was in too much pain so at this point i'm even more like yeah get the fuck out get out um get out of my house so I helped him while he was packing his bags. I went downstairs. I took the house key off of his keys. Um, I went back upstairs. He had his two bags. I grabbed the two bags. Yes, I did. I grabbed the two bags. I had opened up the garage. I had already popped the trunk for his car and threw the bags in the car. I did that because I was like, you getting out of this house. You get out of this house today. You can't come back. You can't come back ever. So I he it took him about about two hours um, from the time of I will beat you like the bitch you are for him to actually leave the house again. I'm calm telling y'all this story. It was not calm in the house. So he eventually 
puts on some sweatpants. Now I can, I can really see how much weight he's lost. But he puts on some sweatpants. He puts on a shirt. He's limping down. He's like, you really going to kick me out on my birthday? I just looked at him. I just looked at him. Opened the door. He went through the garage, got into his car, called, you know, his aunt was still on the phone. And she was like, I'm going to send you some money. And, the, and that's the part I was like, clearly he has the money. Like, you ain't got to send him money. He doesn't even have to go to Philly. He can just go get a hotel for now. I don't care what he does. He's just got to leave his house. So he ends up getting in the car, driving off. My mom calls and she's just like, you know, is he still there? I said, no. Um, I had not told her what all he had lied about. Even in the midst of me being angry and me going off. I never told him that I spoke to the ex-wife. I never told him I knew he was lying about the stepdaughter because then it would've, he would have asked how, you know, what makes you say that? Um, so I did keep my word. I never told I never told him I spoke to her. So he eventually left. I text a friend of mine. I text my landlord. I said, I have an emergency. I need to know if it is okay to get the locks changed. Landlord was like, that's fine. Um, my landlord was super cool. Shout out to Mr. Patel. Um, I went to Home Depot, bought brand new locks, text, my, text a friend of mine, asked him, when you get off work, can you please come by my house? I need the locks changed today. So he was like, oh, okay, what's going on? I said, I'll explain it later. So to give you a timeline of June 17th, when I asked him about San Diego State and I told him that I know you've never even been to California, that was about 8, 30, 9 o'clock in the morning. By the time he left the house, it was maybe going on noon, one o'clock. So this happened pretty quickly. Um, if, you're at, if you're wondering, why did you even ask him? It I, I already knew that I wanted out. I knew that. But for some reason, a part of me was like, let's just see if he'll be honest just one last time. Damn. And he wasn't. And it's So she was still, I wonder was she still going to give him an opportunity if he would have been like, no, I didn't. Like if he just would have had an excuse for the lie that he told, how would she have handled it then? Would she have been like, why did you feel the need to lie to me? I think she still would have kicked this rag ass out. She she should have. Maybe she would have felt a little. But I'm just wondering if he would have told her the truth, how she would have played. Maybe her she would have used that opportunity to get more truth out of him, try to ask more questions. But she still, I think, would have been done with his ass. Ugh. Sent me into a rage, and then he lied to his aunt, saying I ain't never lied to her, and that sent me over the edge. Um, so by one o'clock, by one. 30 he was gone by 2 30 um i had done a pretty good job of cleaning up the, the bedroom he had thrown away the power aid bottles um so i didn't have to touch those i stripped the sheets anything that he touched in that bedroom i stripped the sheets threw them in the trash bag threw them out in the trash can and so it, most of this was adrenaline adrenaline was switched because i hate packing i hate doing all that stuff i went on amazon i ordered oversized large tote bags because i was packing up all his shit so I packed up. I know, all. I'm just saying, like, you don't have big bag, big trash bags. She could have put it in. She just put, put it in the trash bags. Well, I guess she's she spending like, money on tote bags. Well, maybe for. she was like, thank you for paying the bills no. all these months. We're, we're in the, we're borderline <laughs> in the hill. I'm in mean, the hood. Didn't you say Riverdale was the hood where they decapitated the I baby I didn't say head? that the people Okay, said that. well, people, they packing <laughs> trash bags. What are we buying tote bags for? <laughs> his stuff nice. okay? the reason why i packed nice. up all his stuff is because so i had a three bedroom two and a half bath town home one room was the guest room obviously there was a master bedroom and then we had a tv room that he had made like his philadelphia eagles man cave yeah. i was going to put everything that belonged to him pack it up and put it in the tv room because the plan should have been that he's going to come back and get all his stuff okay so that's why i did it um and honestly it just felt good <laughs> to pack up his stuff and and go through it freely because when he packed in a hurry he left obviously really important things. He left all his Invicta watches. He left all his WWE championship belts. And if you know anything about WWE championship belts, you know those things are expensive. He left all his Jordans. He left um, suits. He left uh, Cole Haan shoes. He left all that because he it was such a hurry for him to leave. So all that was still in my house. Um, so around 2.30, I think I, I wasn't even at a place where I could start crying. I was just too angry, still shaking, packing everything up, packing everything up. One of the things that he left um, is a photo album with all the pictures of his mom and dad and his siblings growing up. Now, I had the thought of, I was going to have a burn party oh. and I was gonna put it on Facebook Live. I was gonna burn it with my friends and drink and dance and play music. But um, <laughs> it's his deceased parents. I do have a heart. So I put that somewhere special, me meaning I put it up in the closet. Um, he t had told me that he was going to come back and get his stuff. And so 
I just did not, I, I didn't throw anything out unless it was like something I knew was trash. Other than that, I put everything up and kept it, you know, in the TV room. So that's June 17th. Also on June 17th, I had already ordered his birthday cake. I had ordered the birthday cake like the end of May because it was like a special birthday cake. So I also had to go get the birthday cake <laughs> from the bakery in East Point. Um, and I took it to my family's house and we ate it. Yes, I had left the house, um, went to my family's house, filled them in, my aunt, my little cousin, and my grandfather, because my mom was in Arkansas. So I went over to their house, filled them in on what was going on. They could not believe it. Although my grandfather then told me, he said, he didn't look like he was a football player. He was like, I didn't want to say nothing, but he didn't look like he was a football player. <laughs> Gotta love grandparents. Um, so we ate his birthday cake, went back home. Um, the friend that I had called came, changed all the locks, changed. I changed the security codes. Um, effectively, he would not have been able to get in that house. So that is what happened on June 17th. So now we can fast forward. He, he would text me and he would call me that he got to Philly. Apparently he drove through, he left Georgia and immediately went to Philly. So he immediately went to Philly um, and he did text me and said that he made it to Philly and he was staying at his aunt's house. I know that this is a short part. That's okay because what we're doing now is I went through how we met. I went through how we dated. I went through how we got married. Um, now I'm taking you all to June 17th. The week after June 17th, he's in Philly. He still would call me. He still would um, text me. The conversations we were having the week after June 17th, so this would be June 18th up to the 24th. The conversations we are having had to do with divorce. So who's going to file? And he was like, well, I don't want a divorce. So I'm going to fight you on it. Are you? Really? Are you going to fight me on the divorce? Um, I didn't know anything about filing for a divorce. So... But I refuse to stay in a place of ignorance. So I um, went online. There's a website that you can go to where you pay like a $200, $239 fee. And you fill out basic information and you choose your state. You choose your state and they will um, process, not process, but they will make all your documents. All you got to do is print it out and take it to the court. And it is step-by-step -step directions. We didn't have any property with each other. We didn't have any kids with each other. So by the state of Georgia's standards, this should be an uncontested divorce. So the conversation that last week, the week of June 18th to the 24th was about divorce. What stuff do you want to keep? Well, I'm going to come and get all my stuff. I just don't understand why you couldn't talk to me about it. I said, there's no room for talking because you've been lying to me since day one. Um, but even still, keep in mind, as of June 17th, June 18th, June 19th, I did not know what I know now. So the lies were really only like 5% of the whole story. So June Damn, 24th or 25th is when I had printed my documents and I'm laughing because at this point in time I've read y'all's comments about how that man will print out stuff I know but um I used the website typed all my stuff in got my documents <laughs> and then I went um I took a day off from the job because I was getting ready to transition into the new job so I left work early went to the courthouse and filed for divorce I filed I paid um and then I already had the documents where he would have needed to sign so that um it could then be entered into for a divorce settlement agreement so going into part 36 or 35, I know there's so many parts. Going into the next part is where I can tell you guys what happened with him because he drove to Philly and he was in Philly for about a week, maybe three to four days. Then I get a message on Facebook Messenger from a woman claiming to be his cousin. Lord Jesus. So the cousin tells me, actually I can tell y'all. So the cousin tells me that he's there. He's telling the family that I kicked him out. He's telling the family that I kicked him out after he walked in on me having an affair. Wow. That I stole <laughs> wow. Not the story from the first wife. Well, wait, the second wife. Yeah. It's money. And I then kicked him out. And the man I was having an affair with, he said, was a law enforcement officer who used his duty weapon to threaten him to get out the house. This is what he told his family. What? And the cousin was reaching out to me. She found, my, she found me through a search on Facebook and was reaching out to me because she's like, we know he lies. So I'm just trying to figure out what, like, is this true? Because he's up here asking us for money, asking to stay on our couches. Like, what's, what's going on? Then she explained to me, we didn't even know he got married. So this is the first time we're hearing about you. What do you mean you didn't know he got married? He talks to his brother every day. She said, who told you that? I said, I've heard him talk to his brother every day. All his brothers. She said, all his brothers. How many brothers do you think he has? I said, he has four brothers. I named them. She said, he has two brothers. She, got, she said, he has the twin and he has the older brother. I said, twin. Who is the twin? Welcome to the next part where we discover 
the real family tree. Woo! Part 36, who the fuck did I marry? The family tree. Please fasten your seatbelts and put the tray tables in the Ooh, upright position. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Who in the the cousin, I'm not going to name her. The cousin had reached out to me on Facebook, asked me to please give her a call. So this conversation was on the phone. Yes, I was actually speaking to her. She informs me again about the whole he's up there. He's telling everyone that he walked in on me cheating on him. It was with a law enforcement officer and that the law enforcement officer um, used his duty weapon to threaten him to get him out of the house. The reason why I'm, sp I'm particularly mentioning the fact that he said it was law enforcement is because he was trying to get a family member, like one of his cousins, to call the agency of the law enforcement officer and file a complaint, which in hopes would then start an internal affairs investigation. Yeah. So female cousins on the phone with me. She's telling me everything that he is telling them. She's like, look, we know he a liar. We don't fuck with him. We he's been a liar since a kid, but he's also family. She said, we didn't know at all who you are. So I told you when adults, when you see adults that be really fucked up like that, it be from their childhood. That's why we call it it's shadow work. When you shadow work is when you deal with the traumas that you picked up from a child. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what made him become a liar, but a lot of people, a lot of adults, a lot of messed up adults are just people who have not faced whatever fucked up things happened in their childhood. Yeah, but it also sounds like he just got something psychologically that's going on with like him. Like a mental illness? Yeah. So yeah, like I if can he see that a, too. If he have a mental illness, and I'm just thinking about his family. <laughs> okay, so, and I'm thinking about his family. So, like, when you're a kid, like, parents, they're going to be there, right? But then once you get older, it's kind of like, even though it's still your child, and depending on the shit that they have done, it's kind of like, whoo! I'm glad I'm over that. I'm glad this shit over with. Like, let him just go on out there he grown now. and figure this shit out. You know, like, fuck up somebody else's life. Because you do have family out there that will do that. But it's even I, like with the, the parents who have these kids, they know they're capable of doing those mass shootings. They go out there yeah. and they shoot, them all, shoot all these people up. And they already knew that their child was messed up yeah. in the home. It's like one time I told Nick, I said, yeah, and I told Nick, we were somewhere. And I can't remember what we watched. But remember that time I told you, I said, it's no telling how many crazy people we are around when we're out in public. And this is just the truth. Like, Legion. He's walking around people every day, yeah. access to people. And even though it seemed like something is wrong with him mentally, we don't know how far he can go. Yeah. And that's scary. Yeah. You know, it's scary to know he's out there freely can get in relationships, freely can impact somebody. Create life. new lives. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. scary. But that's why you got to protect yourself. So I thought that that was interesting because I was like, you didn't know who I was, but his brother knew who I was. And so, again, that's when I said to her that um, I was like, I've talked, you know, he's talked to his brother every day. So like, why wouldn't the brother tell y'all that he had gotten married? And so she said, what brother? And so I told her the brother's name. And she said, he told you that? I said he was having the phone calls in front of me. So at this point, what the cousin said was she was like, OK, I'm going to confirm that with him. She was like, he lives up the street. So I'm going to just confirm that with him. She was like, because I'm pretty sure today that, that they have been beefing for a while. I was like, I can only tell you. What I saw, what I heard, that's that's all I can say. So then when she asked me about, well, how many brothers do you think he has? And I said, he has four brothers. Again, I listed all of them. This woman was like, he has two brothers. She said he has the twin and she and he has the older brother, the one that he was on the phone with every morning, blah, 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 blah. I said, twin? Who's the twin? So this is where she explained to me. She said, the parents, mom and dad, had the older brother. The um, older brother is uh, about five or six years older than Legion. Legion and the younger brother who lives in Nashville, they are twins. So when he kept saying the younger brother, my younger brother by two years, it's his older brother by 20 minutes. They are twins. I have seen a picture of this brother. Yes, they do very much look alike, but they, I didn't know they were twins. It doesn't even matter. I didn't know they were twins, um, but definitely they had a mom, the same mom and dad. So she was like, no, that he's older. He's older than Legion by 20 minutes. They're twins. She said, so. This is just me guessing, but what if, what if the twin is just better than him? Like, what if he looked better, he smarter, he moved better? And what if from a child, he would lie to make himself seem more interesting than the, the twin? Or, That's possible. Yeah. Or what if when they was in the womb, 
Because you heard of twins, like, eating the other twin and stuff. Uh -huh. What if he was just sucking some up out of him? And that's why he just... Honey. So, the parents had three boys. Brother in Philly, the older brother, and the twins. She was like, who the hell are these sisters that you're talking about? So, I tell her. I was like, Shantae and Kim. She said, I don't know who Shantae is. She said, Kim is my daughter. Kim is not his sister. Kim is my daughter. And she said, that's his cousin. She was like, and they haven't spoken in about 20 years. So, no, that's not his sister. He does not have any sisters. And I said, well, then what about the other two brothers? She was like, what other two brothers? I said, the brothers from his dad. She was like, you mean to tell me <laughs> this man is going around telling people, I know somebody's going to quote Nicki Minaj lying on your dad, mama, but try not to. Um, she said, you mean to tell me this man is walking around lying on his dad, saying that his dad had kids outside of his mom? And I kind of stuttered like, yeah. She was like, he does not. She said, I have no idea who those two men are. She said, those are not his brothers. But if y'all remember, I've met those two. And he introduced them as, you know, man, this is my, this is my brother, uh, John. This is my brother, Matt, you know, type thing. And so they both were like, oh, my sister is good to meet you. It's good to meet you. Remember that because obviously I do eventually talk to those two men again. Okay. So she says to me, the family tree is mom and dad, the three sons. She was like, there are no sisters. She said, I don't have a clue who Shantae is. She said, Kim is my daughter, so that's just their cousin. But again, they ain't spoken 20 years. I said, okay, and then there was the grandmother. She said, yeah, she named the grandmother. She was like, yeah, she died in like 2008. I said, yeah, he told me that she died in 2020. Yeah. And that, you know, all of you were coming down for the memorial service. And she's just like, she died in 2008. I said, then there was the uncle who also died from COVID. She was like, which uncle is that? I told her the name. She said, he's been dead since like, shit, 2010? I said, okay. What about the cousin nicknamed Junebug? Everybody got a cousin. If, if you're not African American, we all know a Junebug somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. And she just was like, "Oh yeah, you know, you know, cousin Junebug." She was like, "Man, that's that's crazy. What happened to him?" And I was like, "What you what what do you mean? What happened to him?" Because I know he has talked to his cousin Junebug on the phone, like <laughs> few you know a few months prior. He was like, and so she said to me, she said, "Yeah, he had passed away in like 2016." So this is now three people that she's naming that I recall him having either a story about or a phone call with and she's telling me that they are all passed away so this is when the conversation kind of changes and she's like you know what she said let me speak to the older brother um because he probably wants to talk to you she was like you probably should talk to him and a lot of your answers a lot of your questions will get answered she was like this dude's been lying ever since he was a kid she was like oh she said literally we don't fuck with him i remember her saying that verbatim she was so adamant she was like and when he showed up here out the blue talking about how his wife cheated on him with a law enforcement officer and how the guy took his gun out and threatened him to leave the house. She was like, we knew something was up. She was like, that's why I had to find out who you were and reach out to you and find out the truth. I said, there was no other guy. There was no law enforcement officer. And she was like, yeah, because he was telling us where the dude worked and how we should go ahead and file, like help him file a complaint so that this dude could lose his job. I said, there is no other person. I said, I kicked him out. That was me all by myself. No gun, just my fist. Um, and so she said, you know, he tell, he's telling us that he had gotten married. And then she was like, apparently y'all had a baby. So she was like, so you got a kid with him? So I had explained to her. I said, no, I said I had a miscarriage back in July or excuse me, back in June of 2020. And I had to have surgery in July. So she was just like, girl. So she started like really being encouraging and was saying, you dodged a bullet, honey. She was like, I don't wish this. She's like, I know he my family. I don't wish him on no woman. So we, we've had each other's number. She was like, if you need anything, please feel free to call me. She was like, I've had my own issues with him. I've had my own issues in life. But she was like, get your divorce and be done with him. Then she said, I'm going to put you in contact with the older brother. Next part is me finally talking to the older brother that he had been talking to every morning. Wow. Part 37, who the fuck did I marry? So at this point in time, I have filed for divorce. Um, I paid for the filing fee. I'm representing myself uh, pro se, and it should be an uncontested divorce. During this time, Legion had driven to Philly, lied to his family, and said I had cheated on him, um, that he caught me, and that the guy I cheated on him with was a law enforcement officer who used his gun to threaten him to get out of the house. None of that was true. At some point while he was in Philly, he ran out of options in terms of where he could stay. Family members did not want him to stay with them. Um, apparently, a lot of bridges were burned, according to the female cousin I had talked to on the phone. So he left Philly, left Philly and went to Augusta. Yes, what you were hearing is correct. He drove from Georgia to Philly, stayed in Philly for about three, four days, left Philly, drove back to Georgia, went to Augusta. Keep in mind, if you have lost your notes at this point, he was raised in Philly and did high school in Augusta before he went to California. So he has family in Augusta. 
So at this point, he's on his way to Augusta to stay with a new set of people. The reason why this is important is because what I have is a divorce settlement agreement. That divorce settlement agreement has to be signed by the two of us, where we are basically telling the court, look, this is what he's keeping. This is what I'm keeping. I need his signature. Let me repeat that. I need his signature because I wanted a very quick and painless divorce as much as it could be. So by this time, this is now around June 25th. So around June 25th, he's now in Augusta. He had left the house June 17th. So between June 17th and June 24th is the trip to Philly, then leaving Philly, coming to Augusta. Um, my aunt and my little cousin get in the car with me <laughs> and I drive to Augusta with a, with a rag on my head, some sweatpants and a tank top because it's July, so it's hot. We believe um, you. I, We ride to Augusta. I had spoken to him. I had said, you know, I just need you to sign this piece of paper. And he was like, you know, I'll, I'll get to it when I get to it. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. We're going to get to it as quickly as possible. So that means I got to drive to Augusta tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. I'm going to do that because I need that signature. I ain't telling this. This was my attitude. Sure enough, went ahead, drove down there. I met him at the UPS store in Augusta. It's in the same Kroger shopping center. They had a notary there because I needed the papers to be notarized. So he pulls up. It's only been a week since I last saw him. It has been months since my aunt saw him. OK, she had no idea of the condition that he was in. Again, I'm telling y'all, when I met him, when he met my family, he was like a size three X in just a short span of time for a week. He easily could have been in an extra large, maybe even a large, wow. but was wearing three X clothes. So he has told me this whole time he didn't know I had spoken to his family. OK, right. Need to put that in there. He did not know I had spoken to his cousin. So he was telling me that he had a place to stay. He was staying with some family members um, and everything was cool. He told me he was going back to Augusta because he had a job. That's what he told me. The family member, the cousin told me, oh, no, it's not that he had a job. We kicked his ass out because he's still lying and we don't want we don't want anything to do with him. So when I saw him get out of the car, I immediately knew you probably have not washed in three days. I'm not overreacting. He's his nails had not been cut. So his nails were a bit long. He smelled like the Chattahoochee dump on Ooh. a hot summer Georgia day. He stunk so bad. Um, and for a moment, I did not recognize the man I, that I was legally married to. I did not recognize him. Um, he almost looked, uh, what's the word, he may, emanciated? If I, I may be saying, I may be mispronouncing it, but the way someone looks when they've lost so much weight and it's almost like your skin and bones. He, he looked, obviously he looked homeless. He smelled homeless. Um, and my, my heart just kind of broke. It kind of did. I'll be honest, Girl. Um, it did not break enough for me to not get that signature, though. So right. when he walked into the UPS store, you clearly could see that some of the people were like, you know, let me let me get away from him. Me, I just was like, OK, so I just need you to sign right here and I just need you to sign right there. OK, and then a woman named Lauren came over and notarized the papers. Um, and then we were done because he signed a divorce agreement. He didn't even read it. He didn't even read it. The reason why I'm pointing that out is because he didn't read the part where what's left in the house now belongs to me where he took technically what he was going to take. Everything else in that home belongs to me. Remember I told y'all, he had left all his Invicta watches. He had left all his WWE championship belts, his Jordans, his a lot of his clothes, his Cole Hans. He had left all that stuff. He never even read the divorce agreement. So he signed it. I signed it. Lauren notarized it. We leave the store and I said, have you eaten? And he was like, yeah, um, I ate. It's just, you know, my knee. So again, he's, he's talking about the knee, but if you saw him, you would know there's way more to it than the knee. So I said to him, Look, since you met me here, let me give you some money so you can get you some chicken nuggets. Yeah, that's what I said. You can get you some chicken nuggets. So I believe I gave him like five or six dollars. Go get you some chicken. I think I zelled it to him, actually. Just go get you some, some food. Then we... I mean, but... She can give him money for chicken nuggets. Here, can you give us some more wine, please? She can give him money for chicken nuggets, but he got an offshore account. Babe, the nigga ain't got shit. He ain't got shit. Well, he got them two accounts that she looked at. Yeah, so he probably why, been you. I don't know. So why is she having to give him money? I just wouldn't even want to have a conversation with him. Make it seem like I care whatsoever. Yeah, but the he thing is. He wouldn't have gotten no fucking chicken nuggets from But me. you got to understand that's you. Like, it's kind of like there's certain things you do. And I'd be like, I would never do that. It's just her heart. It just seemed like she got a big heart. And it, it seems like that big heart of hers, it messes her up and get her into very messed up situations. But it probably also bless her too. You know, she probably had good karma and stuff. 
Look at how this video blew up. She probably gonna be on TV shows. Tyler Perry probably gonna make a movie. Yeah, but like she, it's just this is her. This her life. This is her and her big heart. Me, I wouldn't get a nigga shit either. Yeah, like Charlemagne said. Babe, all right, hit play, babe. Because <laughs> where he parked was not far. It was like, okay, I'm parked here. He's parked in front of me in the other row. So there's that aisle that you can drive down. Um, so I walked him to the car, and. I saw the condition of the inside of the car. And that's when I knew he's been living in his car. He's been living in his car. So clearly I no longer had a question of, so where's his offshore account? Where's the US bank savings account? What is happening car? Account? Didn't have a question anymore. Because if you had money, you wouldn't be living in your car. You would not be in the same clothes that you were in when you left my house on June 17th. And this is now June 25th. He wouldn't be smelling like bounce that ass Ooh. either. That so ass. he was like, I'm gonna be all right. I'm about to start a new job. I'm gonna be cool. I got a family member I can stay with. Um, everything's gonna be okay. All right. Um, I said, I will let you know when the divorce is granted. I said, I will send you a copy of the divorce decree. And he was like, okay. He said, well, how long do you think that's gonna take? I said, I'm not sure. I thought I had to wait 30 days before I could file the divorce agreement settlement form. And then the judge would grant it um, in 30 days. So basically, this is like June 25th. I'm looking at the end of August that it would take for the divorce to be granted, assuming there were no hiccups, assuming he didn't decide he was going to pull a fast one. So I told him, I was like, I'm, I'm going to file this. And then once we get the divorce decree, I'll send you a copy. He said, okay, he got in his car. I got in my car. I drove all the way back home and he went to wherever he went. Next part is the next series of lies that I was faced with. What? All right, part 38 all of right, Who the Fuck Did I Marry? I'm going to call this uh, housekeeping and it's missing okay. pieces. So housekeeping. Um, first and foremost, <laughs> as much as I know you all have enjoyed uh, this series and some of you have told me how um, entertaining you have found it. <laughs> Um, the, the story will be done, um, this weekend. So in other words, I don't care how many parts I got to film. It will be done this weekend. We're just not bring, we're not going to drag it into the new week. Um, so I just want to let everyone know that. So please be sure to tell your sisters, your mamas, your aunties, your cousins, your best friends. Hey y'all go ahead and watch all the parts because she's saying she's wrapping it up this weekend. Um, but I'll leave the playlist up. So don't worry. Um, also, uh, let's see. I'm sorry for the people who were like, I keep talking really slow. I didn't know that I was. And they're like, you're just long winded. I'm very detailed. Yes, so that's girl, probably you're what you're feeling. Yeah, we got her sped up in case y'all wondering why it's not slow. Yeah. Detailed and I'm trying to get everything out again in a responsible manner. So um, you all have asked me if I will do a live. Yes, I will. I don't have any issue doing a live. I feel like if you're gonna put the story out there, you know you're gonna get questions. So if you stand on business and you stand on what you said, do the live. So yes, I will do a live. And I will let you all know when I'm gonna do a live. So it won't just be some random shit. I will actually do a live and um, let everyone know. So that way, if you have questions, bring them. Um, the issue with doing a live is that I need moderators. <laughs> so because I just anticipate a lot of people have questions and I'm just one person and I don't wanna be accused of, she's ignoring my question, which means there's holes in her story. Y'all, we all know how TikTok is, so but I will absolutely um, do a live. That's the housekeeping. Missing pieces. So when I said before that it's important to me that I'm responsible in how I tell this story, meaning I'm clear and I go in detail, I realized that I left out some missing parts and it was brought to my attention by a number of you. Thank you, because I'm all for accountability. Um, I did not go into how, he, how my ex-husband Legion left the condiment company and then went to Apple. I also did not go into detail on when my mom came to visit. Both of those were in the month of April. Um, I was going to go into detail a little bit more on the Apple situation because as you probably have figured out, of course something came out later on. But nevertheless, um, in terms of April of 2021, my mom came for a visit. She lived in Arkansas. She came to visit us. She came to visit us after we had that whole sexting on Facebook incident and just after we had started marital counseling. There were no fireworks during her visit. There, nothing was weird. I did talk about how um, you know, my family has always been there. And if you spoke with my mom, she would tell you she didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Um, th but there was something in her spirit that just didn't sit right. She didn't talk to me about it at the time. She did not raise her concerns. Um, she simply, when she came to visit, we welcomed her with open arms. Legion was excited to meet her. She was excited to meet him. We took my mom out to eat. Um, it was, it was a typical, very quiet, um, non-active visit. I didn't know what my mother thought until later on. So she didn't share with me during the visit, something don't seem right. Um, she, she and I sat in the guest room talking. I never told her anything that was going on. Number one, because again, it goes back to that mindset of what happens in my marriage needs to stay in my marriage. Um, and I talk about how I didn't think, it, I, looking back, it was not a good idea that I told my aunt what had happened. My aunt is not the type that's gonna tell my mother. That, that, in other words, if you confide in her, she keeps it between you and her. So my mom never knew that there were any issues. Um, 
And so there was there was nothing for her to be on mama bear mode. Had she known, this would have been a very different trip, but she didn't know. So she did come to visit. Um, everything went fine. He and I put on a united front. Oh, we're so happy. We're so, you know, in love. Um, and yes, behind the scenes was a whole different story. He talked to her about how he was looking to buy a house and how he told her how work was going, you know, how his job, you know, little, how his job was going, um, you know, bragging as usual, which I had, I did tell my mom, look, he's going to talk about himself and money a lot. So, um, <laughs> just change the subject. If he brings up a house, change the subject. That was my instructions to her because I was like, I don't even want to get into the whole house situation. So other than that, uneventful. Now, once my mom left, this is still in April, everything was fine with him at the condiment company. As far as I knew, everything was fine. Um, what ended up happening is he randomly came home one day and starts complaining about changes that are going on at the company. When he started complaining about those changes, it was things like, um, keep in mind, he is not VP of the company. He was VP of, I, I keep getting it wrong, but I think it was VP of production is what the memo says. So he was not the second in command for the company. He was upset that he was being blamed for um, production uh, stats, that the production was down. He was upset that his plant manager apparently had um, resigned. He was upset that some of the policy changes that were coming into play that would affect his plant. These are the things that he would, he was coming home and complaining about, literally. He would complain. He started complaining Monday. By Friday, he said, you know what? If they continue doing this, then I just need to find another job. He was like, I think I'm gonna call my homeboy that I work with at Apple and I'm gonna see, you know, what they have available. Yes, there were red flags going up. Of course there were. Um, at this point, we're now we're not even dealing with United Nations of red flags. We are dealing with the Olympics. We are dealing with the parade of all nations. Everybody got a red flag. So when he said that, I was kind of like, OK, because I had become numb to all the antics that he did i was numb to it so he literally said i think i'm gonna call my homeboy and i'm gonna see what's at apple my response to him was well what about your salary um would you take a pay cut he was like no i'm not gonna take a pay cut like i wouldn't leave unless it's gonna be the same amount or more or more money y'all the next week last week of april i'm at work minding my own business he calls me and tells me i've decided to resign you what I've decided to resign. Don't worry. Don't don't get all crazy. Um, I had talked to my homeboy. There is a position at Apple and I'm on my way there now to go and meet him so that I can get some information on the position. You resign. We're married, y'all. Okay. We're married. So what I said to him was, well, will you get all this in writing? His words to me were, of course, I'm gonna get it in writing. I'm not stupid. You know what? I don't even want to talk to you no more. Click. That's the end of Ooh. April. So that is how I was introduced to this Apple job. Again, if you stick with the series, you, you will find out exactly what happened. But that's how I was introduced to the Apple job. It literally was in a span of within two weeks. And he resigned from the condiment company and immediately said, I'm going to move over to Apple. Just wanted to clarify that. So we will continue on. Part 39, who the fuck did I marry? Everything you're going to hear um, probably in this part and the next part, all of this happens in the month of July, 2021. Divorce has been filed. It was filed the end of June. I got his signature on the divorce settlement agreement. Um, I thought that I had to wait 30 days before I could actually file that with the court. And so this is all, this is kind of in the limbo period because I th I'm still within those 30 days. So he left his book, he left a book bag um, at the house, book bag that had all kind of paperwork in there. Inside the book bag, this is the paperwork that I found. Number one, I found a doc, a uh, packet from the condiment company where it showed his 401k contributions it also stated in there that he had been terminated. So he was terminated from the condiment company according to the paperwork in the packet that I saw in the book bag that he left at my house. Also in the book bag were um, paycheck stubs from a previous job where he worked at a cemetery. The same cemetery that he took me to to show me where his grandmother and grandfather were buried. So uh... let's go ahead. I'll. Sh I'll do this video and say this is what he told me this is what i confirmed he told me his grandmother and grandfather were buried there he showed me a headstone with a family name on it if you go back in previous parts it's i talk about it um the truth is they are not buried there he is of no relation to the people who are buried at that particular grave site wow only reason why he knew about it is because he had worked there also in the book bag it was a copy of a driver's license that he had the address on the driver's license now this i still don't have an answer to but the address on the driver's license was the same address as the cemetery because I looked it up on Google. Also in the book bag um, was paperwork from another construction company job, meaning it was paycheck stubs from another construction company here in Atlanta that he had worked for. It did not have dates on it, so I don't know when he worked for the construction company. Also in the book bag paperwork was unemployment um, paperwork. So it looked like he had been receiving unemployment 
just before I met him. I met him in March. It looked like he had been receiving unemployment January and February. So once again, let's confirm. He did not work for the condiment company for six to seven years. Also in there were scraps of paper from a temp agency where it was, it was information on the job that he had been placed at. Where was that job? The condiment company. He would be a forklift slash loader is what it said. So I interpret that to mean he can drive a forklift, a forklift but he would have been loading up the 18 wheelers for them to go out to their deliveries. So this dusty nigga wasn't even a truck driver. He was Dang, the one who loaded he... the stuff onto the trucks. Oh, I wonder if that's how he hurt his leg. Yeah. So that, and it makes sense. The way he looked, the way he dressed, that that fits him. And that's why I told you, I think he worked there, but I think he do something else. Yeah. Not what he said yet. But the company Also car. in this book bag um, was paperwork <laughs> from Clayton County Courts, I believe, um, for a week, uh, uh, what is it called? Weekender Jail? It was like a weekend or jail receipt. So I had to do some research. So apparently what that means is that there is an option where if you have a job, let's say you, you were sentenced to six, 60 days in jail, but you have a full-time job. Apparently the court can say, okay, you'll go to jail on the weekends. So in other words, you have to report to the jail on Friday at five o'clock and you'll be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you will get out Sunday at six o'clock. Apparently that's actually a real thing. So what wow. was in the book bag were multiple yellow receipts for different weekends that he had to report and get out of jail. Last but not least, um, there were some additional... Wait, so that don't make sense to me. I hope she's going to clarify this. So was he missing for the weekends? Babe, I don't no, know. I'm just saying, based off of what she's saying, or was he failing to show up for those... I don't know, honey. ...additional pictures, and then there were some... Last but not least... Um, there were some additional pictures and then there were some, um, and when I say pictures, I'm talking about family photos. And then there were some, there was another additional copy of his driver's license with the Douglasville address. I looked up that address. The name associated with that address was the same name as the ex-girlfriend that he had in between the ex-wife and me. If you go back to the video where I talk about the conversation I had with the ex-wife, she tells me that the address was going to come back to the ex-girlfriend. I'm simply saying that is correct. So what she told me is true. So <clears throat> because of everything that I found, I decided to go down a new rabbit hole. Again, just recapping what I said um, in previous videos. Ex-husband was always a stickler about law enforcement. His dad was a um, retired police officer. I'm just telling y'all the story. His dad was a retired police officer. Mom was a retired teacher. Um, after his parents, after his dad retired, they moved to Augusta, started a church. He took me to that church in Augusta the same day that he took me to meet his aunt who lived in Augusta. So these are now things that he actually took me to, just like he took me to the cemetery. So that's what I found in the book bag. The weekender jail receipts. I went ahead and went online to find out exactly why did he have to go to jail for the weekend. And I'm going to end this part here. The next part has to do with his criminal history. Part 40. Who the fuck did I marry? So we are now at the point of July, 2021. We are at the point where I've spoken to the female cousin and she gave me the phone number for the older brother. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna call him Chris. Chris I was very nice. I called him, he was gracious. Um, he was willing to answer whatever questions I had. And what he said to me was, he, was, he said, my brother has always been a liar. He's always been a liar. He said, but ask me what questions you have and I'll confirm what's real and what's not. First question I had was, when was the last time you spoke to him? Without missing a beat, Chris says, um, 2015, just after our mother's funeral. I explained to him about the phone calls, the fact that Legion would be on the phone for 30, 35 minutes, laughing, talking to Chris, relaying messages from Chris to me and relaying messages from me to Chris. Without missing a beat, Chris says he was never talking to me. And I said, and he said, now I'm, I am gonna say this, maybe he was on the phone, but he was not on the phone with me. He said, because he knows that if I ever see him, I'm gonna whoop his ass. Wow. And I'm laughing because obviously Legion loves to say I'm gonna whoop somebody's ass. Um, so for the people who are confused, like, wait, what does this mean about the phone calls? What this means is every single time that my ex-husband was on the phone, holding his phone like this, talking, <laughs> laughing, cracking jokes. Hey, um, my wife said that, you know, we could go later on this evening and all this other stuff. Every time they were doing things like that, every time he was having a phone call or conversation that he claims to be with Chris, no one is on the phone. No one's on the phone. That is what that means. So... I'm on the phone with Chris. My mind is 
spinning. It is blowing up like a volcano. I mean, I'm I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy because what this means is that for the past four or five months, every morning that he is having a phone call with his brother, Chris, I am now understanding in real time that that phone call was completely fake. So Chris tells me maybe he was talking to somebody else, but it wasn't me. He said the only family member that Legion actually talks to is the twin. And that's only because for some reason, I guess it's their twins. He helps him out when he needs it. Legion only calls the twin when he needs money. And the twin, according to Chris, now this is the part that might blow some minds. The twin brother, the one that is older by 20 minutes, is VP of his company, is married, drives a luxury car, and lives in like a four or five bedroom house. I told you. I said, what if when he was a kid, I said that twin was better than him. Look better, smarter, can run faster, all that. And that is probably what threw his ass into a lion to make himself seem more interesting. Um, or or I like he it. was doing some of the same shit that the twin was doing. It's like maybe it was him trying to get out of his twin's shadow. Yep. <laughs> Comment below your thoughts on that. In Nashville. Yep. So Chris is saying to me, he was like, it sounds like he took the identity of the twin and was trying to act like that's his life. And it's not, he was like, that nigga ain't never had no money. Ain't never kept a job a long period of time. And he was like, and you're telling me that he claims he was VP of a company? And so he was like, did you ever see anything? Did you ever meet people like that? Like Chris, I respect the fact that he was asking me the same questions y'all were asking me. Did you ever meet any family members? And I told him, I said, I met your aunt. Well, what aunt is that? I told him her name. He said, that ain't our damn aunt. I don't know if y'all have ever dealt with people from Philly. So he was just loud. He was like, that ain't our aunt. He said, that is our mother's best friend. And I don't trust that. Hoe. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, it's the way he said it that uh, it makes me laugh. Anyway, he's like, I don't trust her. I don't trust her at all. She, she is not our aunt. She was our mother's best friend when our mother was living in Augusta. She's not our aunt. So then I explained to him about the other brothers. The brothers, remember, there were two half brothers from his dad. One lived in Baltimore. One lived in Augusta. Chris is on the phone saying, I don't know who them niggas are. They ain't related to us. He said, our dad never had other kids. He was like, so you mean to tell me this nigga going around telling people that our dad had kids on our mom? And I said to him, well, the way he actually put it is that the, the two brothers came before y'all. He was like, hell no, no. So and then I explained to him about the sisters. He was like, who the hell is Shantae? And I was like, Shantae, apparent, again, I'm just telling you what I was told. Shantae is a sister that lives in Douglasville, married with two kids. He was like, no, we don't have a sister. Told him about Kim. He was like, Kim's not our sister. She's a cousin. And she and he said to me, and I know she ain't talked to him in forever in two days. He said, so everyone, the only people who are his family members is Chris and the twin. He's like, we got some cousins up here. I told him about Junebug. I told him about the uncle. I told him about the grandmother. And he's just sitting back like, oh my God. He said, he was like, I realized that every relationship my brother gets in, he gets worse. And it sounds like he is actually worse than what he was in the last relationship. And I thought he was talking about the ex-wife that I had spoken to. No. He had no idea there was another wife. Because again, he hasn't spoken to him since 2015. So he was so then, so then maybe it's good that he's being exposed at this level where millions of people are now being able to see his face. But the scary thing about it is there are more people out there that ain't getting exposed to this level. Mm -hmm. And they just line, line, line. But maybe it's good that this is being exposed so people can just see what it looked like and move accordingly. Protect yeah, yourself. I was going to say just to play in in her favor um when the brother said what family have you met him she's like yes i met the family i met the aunt i met the brother you know so she's thinking that she's meeting family so i guess in her head she like why should i feel like he's lying Girl, if she wouldn't have moved as fast as she did, she wouldn't have been in this situation. Yes, y'all, because let me just say this. I, you know, it was crazy because I'm sitting up here like, okay, she met him in March. And by May, she was pregnant. Yeah, like that was very irresponsible of her. So, yeah. It's like you don't even. It's like she's putting her life at risk for this this stranger that she don't even know. She didn't let him in her house. Yeah, what if he was a killer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, the best thing I can say to you is this. He said, thank God you ain't have kids with him. Right. He said, get your divorce and forget you ever met this man. And he was like, and I know how that sounds because he's my brother. He said, but if I didn't have to claim him, I wouldn't. And I, and I said to him something that I, I should have probably said in this, in this whole TikTok series. 
this is not someone that you forget. This is not a situation that, you know, man, I, I don't even remember him. No, what I don't remember is the version of myself before I met him because nothing so far has turned out to be true. The only thing that Chris was able to tell me is true is that number one, yes, there is a brother in Philly, him. Yes, there is a brother in Nashville, the twin. Yes, both parents are deceased. That is what I was told from the beginning. Those pieces of information are true. The grandmother did die in 2008. He was like, no, she didn't. She definitely didn't die in 2020. I told him how I found the obituary. And so he was like, and the uncle, he said, which uncle is he talking about? Because if you guys remember back in one of the parts, I talk about where he said his uncle was giving him advice on why he should not open up his, um, his, his uh, savings account to let me see it. He would not let me see it. And so I'm telling Chris about the uncle. And he was like, that uncle been dead for years. I told him about Junebug. He said, J Junebug been dead for years. And I said, Chris, he was having conversations with Junebug on the phone in front of me. He was like, it wasn't Junebug. He said, it sounds like my brother was making up the conversations. Yeah. He said, he definitely was making up the conversations with me. He said, hell no, nah, I ain't gonna be on the phone at no six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so the conversation with Chris solidified that this is the actual family tree. And no, there were never any conversations with his brother every morning um, when I was getting ready to go to work. They had never talked. On to the next part. Part 41, who the fuck did I marry? So this is a continuation of my conversation with Chris, which will then lead into some other stuff. So um, Chris has confirmed that he has not spoken to Legion um, since 2015. So now we know that the phone calls that Legion was having every morning on the phone with Chris when we were you know, getting ready to go to work, the phone calls were fake. I demonstrated in the last video how I think he, you know, how he was doing those phone calls because um, he would relay messages from me to whoever was on the phone. So Chris and I also then talked about their parents. So if you remember in the beginning, I told you from the get go, this man was, you know, very respectful of law enforcement because his dad was a retired police, Philadelphia police officer. The mom was a retired teacher. And so he had the utmost respect for law enforcement. That's what he used to always say, because again, there's, there's a lot that he lied about. So I'm trying to only highlight the big things because truthfully, um, it got to a point where when he would say that as a VP in his company, he had a meeting with the local sheriff. Child, we know we know that's a lie, so I don't even need to go into detail about that because, again, why? So I told Chris what Legion said about their dad being a retired police officer, um, and I was explaining how he said the mom was a retired teacher. So Chris listened, again, very gracious, very nice guy. He listened, and he was like, so are you ready for me to tell you what's true and what's not? Um, and at this point, I was already convinced I was going to be drinking heavily that night after this phone call, so I was like, go ahead. All right, so here's what Legion said. Legion said, my dad was a retired police officer with Philadelphia PD. When he retired, he and my mom moved to Augusta. I was there for high school and um, they started a church. He took me to that church in Augusta and, show, and you know showed me where the church that they started. The truth. Dad, according to Chris, their dad was nowhere near the church. That man ain't go to church on Easter. He ain't go to church on Christmas. He was like, my dad ain't go to, he ain't stepped foot in the church since the day he got married. That was the last time he went to church. He didn't have nothing to do with church. He said um, that their father was the furthest thing from a pastor. And he was like, I love my dad, but that man drank, smoked, and nah, he, he was not a pastor. The mom was not a retired teacher. She did substitute teach at one point, but she was not a retired teacher. Um, the dad was a truck driver. And not only was the dad a truck driver, at one point, he was a correctional officer. And so... I said to Chris, I was like, yeah, I said, I had no idea, of course, <laughs> I had no idea. So now we know the truth. Parent, the, the dad was never in law enforcement. Um, and I'm not knocking correction officers. I'm just, I want to make very clear because I know that sometimes people that work in law enforcement feel like, look, when I'm out there patrolling, that is not the same as being um, a correction officer and correction officers may feel the same. So I just want to give the distinction between the two. So the dad at one point was a correction officer. However, his primary career was a truck driver. And so um, the dad would do long hauls. So Chris is explaining, no, he, 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 man, he was like, now that's funny. He said, if you knew our dad, you would understand how funny that is to even insinuate that he was a, that he was a pastor. And so I told him about the church that we went to. He was like, oh, okay. So he took you to a church in Augusta and told you that that was our parents' church. He was like, now our mom used to go to church, you know, every now and then. But he said, our dad ain't been to church since the day he married mom. <laughs> so the church that Legion took me to and said that his parents started that church, that, that was not true. So he just took me on a field trip for nothing basically so i told him about the weekend because i did tell chris where i worked and that is when chris said to me because at the time i worked in a law enforcement agency and he said to me now how does that work he said because legion you know he done been in trouble a few times 
And I was like, what do you mean? Because I had not yet gone online into the court system to see what type of trouble he's been in. And so he explained to me, he was like, just run his, run his criminal history and you'll see it for yourself. He said, because I don't know all the charges, but run his criminal history. I said, okay, he gave me some homework. I'll run his criminal history. So again, he cleared up a lot of stuff in regards to the family dynamics. He did explain to me that, yes, he does have a daughter. Um, he and his ex-wife are divorced. And I said, well, Legion would, Legion would talk about his, the niece, meaning Chris's daughter, and would send her stuff for her birthday. And he was like, I'm, he said, I'm almost positive my brother never sent anything for my daughter's birthday. And I explained to him, I said, isn't your daughter's name Egypt? He said, no, who the hell is Egypt? <laughs> And I said, I was told that was your daughter's name. That's the reason why I'm telling, I'm saying the name on here because obviously we're about to confirm that's not the daughter. So I said, I was told that's your daughter's name. I said, I, I went with him to Rack Room Shoes and bought shoes for what I was told was your daughter. And she lived in St. Louis with your ex-wife. He said, no. He said, my daughter and my ex-wife do not live in St. Louis. He said, I don't know who Egypt is. Um, he was like, are you sure it wasn't for a woman? And I said, well, it was kid shoes. And he was like, no. He said, and I told him, I said, I went to the UPS store. I mailed it. And, it, you know, I, I, they printed the label with the girl's name on it. And I'm thinking this whole time, it's Legion's niece. Chris is like, I don't know who that is. That's not even the name of one of our cousins. So I have no idea, ladies and gentlemen, who my ex-husband was buying girl shoes for and had me sending them telling me it's for his niece. He was sending it to the no abyss. So Chris is like, yeah, he, he's, he, he finally said to me the same thing the ex-wife said, which is pretty much whatever he told you is a lie. And I was, and I, I'm, I'm being honest with you guys. It is very hard to comprehend that everything is a lie. Like there has to be something that's true. I'm like, how was he paying? If he wasn't working at the condiment company or he got fired from the condiment company, how was he still paying the bills? Keep in mind, we never joined our accounts. He wanted to, but we never did because he wouldn't show me <laughs> the offshore, the savings account, which of course never existed. So I'm just trying to figure out, like, I know that I saw his checking account. I know that I saw his savings account and he had money in there something had to be true something had to be true and chris was like no he said it sounds like everything my brother said um everything that he told you was made up he said those phone calls were definitely made up he said i don't know who egypt is that's not any family member of ours um i don't know who shantae is we don't have a sister um he said we don't have half brothers he was like i'm telling you who the family members are he said i am so sorry that my brother put you through this so now let's go into the next part part 42 who the fuck did i marry so I finished going through the book bag, still July of 2021. I finished going through the book bag. Um, there were some other folders with papers in there. He had left the work phone, work phone. What I actually found out was that it was not a work phone. It was simply a secondary personal phone. He told me it was a work phone. I thought that the company was paying for the work phone. That's what I thought. No, because I found um, receipts where basically, and I didn't know this, ladies and gentlemen, I had no idea, but I found receipts where he it was a prepaid phone and he's paying to add minutes to it so it's just receipts of you know you you added minutes to the phone on this date you added minutes on that date so the, the uh, work phone whole thing that was a bold-faced lie obviously it was a lie because as we now know he was a forklift loader so the work phone that he's been walking around with was really just a secondary phone he had left the phone he took his personal phone meaning the, the main phone i should say but the work phone he left so i'm going through the work phone just try, trying to find some sort of answer now what is really burning in my mind is how how is it that he had all this money in the accounts but again the last time i saw him he's living in his car like the math is not mathing you said you i go it. into not just the photos of the work phone i go into the deleted folder so ladies and gentlemen if you're gonna go through somebody's phone which i will never do again but if you're gonna go through the phone don't just go through the text messages and the pictures go into the deleted folder because sometimes you find a gold mine in this case i went into the deleted folder of the pictures in the work phone. I keep saying work phones because again, this is just a secondary phone. Yeah. It is deactivated, there's no minutes on it. So I go into the deleted pictures and what I see is, a, is what looks like a screenshot of his checking account, the one that I saw with the available balance. Then there's another photo of the screenshot of the savings that he showed me. Now, one of two things it could be. Either one, it's not real and it was pulled offline or two he took a screenshot of his own account and saved the photos so this is when i got introduced to reverse google Im google image search i did a reverse google Im image search oh. sure enough as you probably have figured out some of you because i read it in the comments what he showed me when he turned his phone around showing me his available um checking account balance 
was nothing more than a screenshot that he had found. And that's what I said. That's I was like, that I shit could have yeah. just been a screenshot. Like, I need to actually see you log into the account and pull it up. Like, damn, you weren't smart enough to even ask that. But at one point, I thought she said he logged into his account unless she thought he Maybe was. he was logging like um, she didn't see him actually logging into it. It's like, goodness. People just moving in the world like so this. so trusting. Uh, I would have been like, I, I would have knew that I need to watch him log into it. I know nine times ten, the bank going to take you through some type of verification. Send you a text message or call your phone. <sighs> on Google. When he showed me his savings, turned the phone around. Because remember, I, I demonstrated for y'all how he was. And then, exactly. you know, showed it, turned it around and showed it to me as if he was signing in. When he did that, he was he was simply showing me a screenshot that he had taken from Google Images. Because when I did a reverse Google Im image search with those two photos, the checking and the savings, it came right up. It was nothing more than just Google Images. In my phone, I still had, I didn't even need this because again, I already knew that he was not a VP regional manager, but still for shits and giggles, I did a reverse image search of the charcoal BMW. Remember I told y'all he had sent me pictures of the company car. Nothing more than a screenshot he had taken off of Google Images. The house that he Girl, showed. Girl, he fooled you with Google Images. Girl, he played you like a fucking fiddle. fiddle. With Google in Google Images. And was living a good ass life. Yes. Then moved up into your place. He hit a lick. Nah. How I be saying? If nah. You, if you if you present yourself like a sucker. Yes, you gonna get, get lit. Honey. Showed me that he had in San Diego, Google Images. So, what we can now confirm is, anything he showed me when he's turning his phone around is nothing more than an image from Google Images at this point. Look, I bet you if he would've had a Google image of a bank account with, how you say, babe, a gazillion zeros, yeah. her head would've popped off her body. The checking account, the savings account, Google Images. The house, Google Images. The company car, the BM, that charcoal gray BMW 5 Series, Google Images. So at this point, I realize, okay, nothing, nothing is real. Um, and I wasn't so much in a rage, to be honest with you, I wasn't in a rage then and there. As much as it was, I really truly had a moment where I said to myself, oh my God, what the fuck have I let in my life? Like, this is not even human at this point. That's really how it felt. Like, again, as someone who, um, I, you know, I had studied psychology, but I didn't, I didn't graduate with a psychology degree. However, I have never dealt with a pathological liar. I have studied about them, but I have never come into contact with a pathological liar. Because to a compulsive liar, if you ask them, man, why did you lie to me? They probably are going to have a reason. Pathological liars don't. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And I want to know this too. Like, when she say, because this is the second time she said it, she said, she studied psychology, but she didn't graduate. I'm wondering how far did she go? Is this just like some self-study she did on her free time? Because I know, you know, when you go to school, before you even really get deep into the major, you have to take all the bullshit classes first. Yeah. So I'm like, how deep did she really go into the shit? Is she just saying it, you know, just to say No, it? what if she just researched it somehow? Uh -huh. Oh, Googling? Look. <laughs> No. She manifested the Google in her life. Listen, but you know how we um kind of like how we sit up and we research narcissists. Okay. Well, obviously, she didn't do that good of a job. He's but I wonder, even if it was Google, what made her Google that? It's just maybe that's what she's interested in. Maybe she dropped out of this shit because you got to take them foo-foo classes first. <laughs> that's what got my ass. Girl, have this thing like... like there's, and there's no limit to the lie. So I have now confirmed that at least 70% of everything that I thought I knew is now absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. So in between all of this, I get a phone call from the aunt in Augusta. The aunt in Augusta who Chris has confirmed is the mother's best friend. She is not their mother's sister or dad's sister. She's the best friend of the deceased mom. She calls me and this is the one I have met. This is the one that Chris was like, I don't trust that hell, you know, anyway. Um, so she called because she wanted to know what happened. She wasn't trying to be nosy or messy or anything like that. No, She's just she trying was. to find out what happened because apparently no. Legion is trying to come stay with her. So she asked me. I mean, again, because she didn't got fooled by Legion. 
Baby, she could be getting fooled by the fake auntie. Because we all know people be wanting to know, okay, well, what really happened? Mm-hmm sweet lady but she said you know what what happened with you with you guys she's and i and i told her we're getting a divorce um i said because he, he lied to me a lot he lied to me a lot um and so what breaks my heart about the conversation with her is that she said so whatever happened to the baby mind you we went to augusta told her i was pregnant i thought he told her that i had had a miscarriage he didn't he never told this woman i had a miscarriage so she informs me this is what she tells me so now we're confirming something else she tells me that on at least five times while I'm at work, Legion was driving to Augusta and telling her that he was going to visit the church of where the parents of allegedly start the church that the parents started. And I was like, what do you mean he went to Augusta? She said, I've seen him like four or five times. He's come down here. And each time I've asked him to bring the baby. And I said, what baby? And she said, the, the baby that y'all had. He told me that you all that y'all had a baby boy. And I said, oh, ma'am, I said, I had a miscarriage in June of 2020. And she said, oh, my God. Oh, you know, she was she was doing that whole thing. Um, she said this whole time he told me that y'all had had a son in January and I had been asking him for pictures. I had been asking him to bring both of you down here so I could meet him. And he always had an excuse as to why he wouldn't bring the baby. And the last time he was in Augusta, he said that he was leaving you and he was taking the baby with him and that you were at work. I am not making this up. That is what that woman told me. And I just was like, no, ma'am none of that is true there is no baby um i said i had no idea he was going to augusta next part Dang. part 43 who the fuck did i marry so after the conversation with the aunt again she's telling me that legion has been keeping up this lie that we had a son i let her know no ma'am there was no baby we did not have a baby um and i said i'm so i thought that he told you and she said he's told a few people that you all had a baby and she said because i know some people were sending were, were trying to send a gift to celebrate the birth I didn't know anything about that. Didn't know anything about that. So she said, he's trying to come stay with me. She said, but I don't think I, I want him to, again, she's an older lady. She was like, I don't think I want him to come here because I don't really want to get involved with um, his divorce again. And I said, what do you mean again? I said, are you talking about the previous wife? And I said the previous ex-wife's name. She said, I don't know who that is. I'm talking about Latoya, La Latanya, that one, the first one. And I said, well, what happened? Do y'all remember I said in my previous uh, video, that I found, I read their divorce records. He had filed for divorce and they had a temporary protection order against each other. I said that. So now the aunt is on the phone saying that she had to go to court and testify on Legion's behalf in regards to the temporary protective order. And I was like, well, what happened? She said they, she said they got into a fight with each other. And she slapped him and I said, well, do you know why they got into a fight? And she said, yeah, apparently he had lied to the wife and it was something major and they got into a physical fight. And, that, and she said that woman almost beat his behind. And so he asked the court for a temporary protect, protective order. So now I'm just getting the backstory on how that TPO was even, even came into play. So I told her, I said, you know, Miss Christy, we'll call her. I said, you don't have to worry about that. I said, we're not, um, he's already signed the paperwork. We're not fighting. I'm not, I'm, I don't have it in me. I don't. So I said, I'm not going to tell you not, not to have certain people in your home, but I am going to tell you that I'm just barely kind of discovering exactly what the lies are in regards to Legion. So if you feel comfortable having him in your home, then do it i said but i am going forward with this divorce and once the divorce is final i will have nothing to do with him and I, I said and i'm so sorry you know that he lied to you um and kind of pulled at your heartstrings in regards to a baby i said there is no baby so she said so y'all are really getting a divorce i said and i didn't want to cuss to the older ladies but i said yes ma'am we are we are um and so we get off the phone um also during this time legion would call me every now and then legion had no idea i've spoken to his ex-wife i've spoken to his brother i've spoken to his female cousin he had no idea i have now if we want to go through real quick and talk about what we can confirm we can confirm that um there is no sister we already knew there was no baby there was no um vp job again he was he was a temp and apparently he was making decent money so what i believe and this is just what i think off of putting pieces together i think that he made enough money to pay the household bills because it wasn't as if the household bills were so expensive he made enough money to live on his own um but instead of him living on his own he's living with me so we can also confirm that when he told me that he was paying his car off and he called the dealership and paid his car off we can confirm that that's a lie that story will come up later on so pretty much at this point the only thing i know to be true his name 
his date of birth, the secondary social security number that was on my background check, um, and that he has two brothers and the parents are deceased. At this point in time of July, 2021, that is all I can, that's all that I was able to confirm that to be true. So later on, Legion calls me. He calls me because he wants some money. He want, he just needs a little bit of money to hold him over till payday. And so he, we're on the phone, the call, again, I was recording all my calls at the time. We're on the phone and I just, and I finally kind of confronted him, number one, about having a twin. That's when he tells me, you know, I, I, I don't know why I lied, but I don't really talk about him. Number two, I asked him about, I asked him why did he get fired from the condiment company? His story is that he got fired because he had helped a truck driver and he was not supposed to. I know it's a lie. Y'all don't even have to tell me. I know it's a lie. Um, number three, I asked him, why did you tell your aunt that we had a baby? He claims he never told her that and that she's old and she didn't know what she was talking about. So then I asked him if he was ever in trouble where he's been arrested. And he said, yeah, I've been arrested as a juvenile, but my father had my record expunged. I said, were you ever arrested as an adult? He said, no, nah, I ain't never been arrested as an adult. I said, so you never went to weekend jail? He said, no, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> well, no, but look, I, this also kind of confirms when you was asking, what would she have done if he did start telling the truth in a moment? And I said, I think she would have used that opportunity to try to get more out, get of, more him. out of him. Just, mm -hmm. I don't know. So he doesn't know what weekend jail is. That's that's his story. And so he was still he was still standing by the lies he told me. So finally, I just asked him, and this is where I, I let me just say it. I asked him, why the hell did you even marry me? Like why? Why did you even marry me? Because you easily could have just stayed dating or been the boyfriend or just moved on, moved on with your life. Like you didn't have to marry me. You didn't have to pull me in into a marriage and make me think that this is what you wanted. This is what he said to me on that phone call. He said, I had to marry you. And I was like, no, you didn't. He said, yes, I did. He said, I knew full well from day one that there was no way you were going to stay my girlfriend for longer than a year. He said, I knew. That's what I was thinking too. I was thinking like she was, I think Loki putting that pressure on him, feeling some type of way about shacking up because it goes against like her religious beliefs and stuff like that. So her constantly probably bringing it up. You yeah. know, probably pushed them into that situation. Other than that, he probably would have been a boyfriend for a long time. For a long time. He said, I knew in order to keep you, I was going to have to marry you. Yeah. He did the keep Y'all, my jaw hit the ground. I could not believe he said that. And he said it so matter of fact. And I was like, that is the most fucked up thing you could ever say. Part 44. All right, Who the fuck did I marry? <laughs> the videos that you saw earlier were filmed it's earlier better. today. Um, and yes, I'm aware. It was brought to my attention. Um, I had to make a decision whether or not to finish, keep my word, or stop, disappear. <laughs> I mean, disappear. Um, okay, let's finish. So, first of all, let me say this. It is not easy telling this story. It is, it's entertaining. I know it's gone viral, um, but it is not easy telling this story. I made a decision to tell this story. I made a decision to share my story, but I went through in hopes that it helps just one person. But I would be remiss if I didn't tell you all, it is not easy telling this story, to relive it, to face certain things out loud that I had to face internally. Just wanna say that. So yeah. I, I will push forward to finish, but today, got to me the toll of this got to me today so i know that you all are like we're waiting on the next part we're waiting on the next part i appreciate that and i get it because if i was in those shoes i would be waiting too and be like where is it so i understand that um but the toll was real today all right so with that being said um we are still in july of 2021 um i had talked to the brother chris i had talked to the aunt i had talked to um all these people and now was the time where i again i saw the receipts for the weekend jail type thing um so I went ahead and did a search for his criminal history. I ran his criminal history. I did that on my own at home um, with my money. So this was not, I think someone had asked if I did anything with my job. No, I did not. I know, I know better. Um, so I ran a criminal history or I paid for a criminal background report. For him to say that he appreciates law enforcement so much, it was obviously a lie because the criminal history showed that he had been arrested for criminal trespassing. He had been arrested for like suspended license, um, suspended registration, 
but the big thing was impersonating an officer. If you don't know anything about impersonating an officer, it is a felony. Yeah. Period, point blank. As sure as Peachtree runs from Bankhead to Buckhead, it is a felony. So seeing that, seeing what court it was in, um, I did another open records request for the incident report. I wanted to know exactly what the circumstances were, especially given the fact that I worked in law enforcement at the time. What were the circumstances as to how he was arrested for impersonating an officer? So I did an open records request. I got um, the incident report. And I'm tired of saying my jaw hit the floor. But on this one, my jaw hit the fucking floor. I respect law enforcement. Again, I, I was working in an agency um, with a lot of great men and women. Basically, what the incident report, and I'm paraphrasing it because I don't have it sitting in front of me. Basically, what the incident report shows is that he pretended to be an officer using a badge. I later found out it was the badge that his dad had as a former correction officer. Same last name. So he was pretending to be um, a police officer at an apartment complex on the south side of Atlanta and proceeded to tell people that he was an investigator and he was looking for drugs. He also proceeded to try to uh, pat down someone and then also proceeded to try to go into a woman's apartment and do a search. This is in the incident report. So naturally, the woman who he was trying to get into her apartment to do a search happened to either work with or worked at a local police department. So she just simply called her coworkers or called her homeboys or whatever. And so he was subsequently arrested and subsequently was charged um, and found guilty. That is what I found in his criminal record report. It is fair to note, had I known that he had a criminal history, we never would have even finished date number one. Some things I'm just not going to get involved with if I know from the, from the rip. Um, so what does this mean? Again, we've been going over what's the lie, what can you confirm? I can confirm that there was no way that this man ever had a passport to take me to London. When he claimed that he was voting in the election, there's no way that he did because he tried to tell me that he was still a, um, a registered voter in California and that he did it online. I knew it was a lie. But again, at this point in July, I'm able to confirm that, yeah, you never had a passport. You never voted. The small things that mean something to me, he never did it. He wasn't eligible to. So now I know that not only have you, yes, been arrested. Now, what happened as a juvenile, I don't care. But you, you have been arrested. You have done some sort of time. And now it explains why you knew your way around the county so well. If you go back to the previous videos, I had mentioned that I was wondering, how do you know your way around here? And the story was his sister used to live in this county. And he would come visit when he would fly in from California. When he would go see his parents in Augusta. That was the story. So that explains the criminal history. Um, and I'm also going to take you guys back and remind you when I had to go in for my polygraph and how the polygrapher had asked me, have you, do you know anyone that is a convicted felon that you have relationships with, blah, blah, blah. And remember I said to him, my husband and I are estranged. I honestly don't know. Fast forward to July where I find out that yes, in fact, on top of everything, I was married to a convicted felon. Had no idea, no idea whatsoever. And it's nothing by the grace of God that I was able, that I was honest with the polygrapher and telling him, look, I, I don't know what's in this man's background. To say that I have no idea who I married is an understatement. It, it is a complete understatement. It's fair to say, well, you only knew him for like two and a half weeks before you quarantined with him. That's fair. And I can understand that. And I take responsibility for that. But in the big scheme of things, I had no idea the creature that I was sleeping next to every night. Ugh. No idea. All right. Part 45. Who the fuck did I marry? So we are now end of July august time frame during this time um legion basically disappeared remember i'm still waiting on the final divorce decree to come up i'm actually waiting for the 30 days to be up so i can file the divorce settlement form so i'm waiting on that on those 30 days to be up i'm playing nice with him i'm being cordial i've i have done uncovered all kinds of stuff but just in case he was going to act a fool i was trying to be cordial so i had spoken to him on like a monday and i was trying to get a hold of him for something but i'm the one that initiated a phone call in the coming days Never heard from him. Never heard from him at all. He wasn't, his phone was um, was dead. Um, it was going straight to voicemail. And I genuinely was worried. A few days turned into a week. By the time I hadn't heard from him in a week, because I knew he was not living anywhere but his car. That I knew that. So this is what happened, y'all. <laughs> um, I first reached out on Facebook. Remember, even though he has told me that he had all these siblings. We know he didn't have all these siblings. But remember, I told y'all, I had met the brother in Augusta. And I had met the brother in Baltimore. These are people I've met. The brother in Baltimore I talked to on FaceTime. The brother in Augusta, I've actually physically met, hugged, shake hands, all that. Um, so I reached out to, on Facebook, to people that I remember him talking about all the time. The friend Omar, the brother in Augusta, the brother in Baltimore. 
um, another cousin in Augusta. I was doing a search for these people's names, just like, hey, have you heard from Legion? The brother in Augusta told me, no, I haven't heard from him. I've been trying to reach him, um, but the phone's going straight to voicemail. I knew he was living in his car. So my brain was doing everything it could not to go on the deep end. I reached out on Facebook to the brother in Baltimore. And I said, you know, hey, it's, he gave him my name. And I said, um, have you heard from Legion? Now, mind you, the brother in Baltimore and him have talked, talked on speakerphone. I guess it's important that I make that distinction. They have talked yes. on speakerphone. So I know that they have talked at least in 2020. So I said to him, again, according to Legion, they talk all the time. But I have heard them on the phone in 2020. So I said, have you talked to him? The brother from Baltimore informs me, no, I ain't talked to him. He owes me money. So I ain't got nothing to say to him. And I said, wait a second. Like, he was telling me that y'all are brothers. He was like, man, he's like a brother. But I don't fuck with it. I don't fuck with him because he owes me money. So they had not spoken. This is now July 2021. They had not spoken in well over six months. So all the phone calls, this is what it means, guys. All the phone calls that he had with the brother in Baltimore in 2021 were not real. Then I reached out to the the, the Omar guy. And I, and I remember the story was is that he and, he and him known each other's years since California worked together at the condiment company. I reached out to Omar and said, you know, have you heard from Legion by any chance? Explained who I was. He responds with, and I'll never forget it. He responds with, no, I have not heard from him. I have absolutely no contact with him whatsoever. We are not friends. And I would appreciate if you do not reach out to me again about him. Huh? The stories I was told was that this dude is supposedly his best friend. Shocking moment. So they had not spoken in years. They're not cool. He does not fool with them. Okay. Went on to the next person, a female cousin I had met. She said, no, um, I have not heard from him. Why would I hear from him? Um, we, we're, we don't really talk. Like, I think she was genuinely weirded out by the fact that I'm reaching out to her out of the blue asking, hey, by any chance, have you talked to my soon-to-be ex-husband? So what I discovered in the, because he ended up being gone for two weeks. What I discovered in those two weeks, let me be very clear with the statement I'm getting ready to make. I called, every, I reached out to every person I know who apparently has had some form of relationship with him. Either he said that they were friends, they talked on the phone, he said they hung out. Um, the brother in Baltimore, I was told, had been to the house while I was at work. Brother in Baltimore said, no, that, that never happened. I've never been to your house. All these people knew that Legion was a liar. And I think that they all felt bad, with the exception of the Omar guy, felt bad that I was kind of just discovering what they've known for years. In those two weeks, I found out every single person I reached out to, not a single one of them gave a shit if that man was dead or alive. All of them had the attitude, some even said it, no, I haven't heard from him. I don't care to hear from him. It was as if, it was for me, it was such a sad moment because I discovered this man has no friends. Fuck whatever he has said. I am now able to prove it. He has no friends. There is nobody who is concerned that they have not heard or seen him in over two weeks. Some people months, one guy years, none of them were concerned. So basically what I'm saying is that I discovered he had burned bridges with everyone. Burned bridges with family, burned bridges with so-called friends, burned bridges with fake brothers, fake sisters, fake aunties, uncles, everything. He had burned bridges with everyone. And for me, that was more telling than anything else. Yes, I knew he was a liar. Um, yes, I knew he had made stuff up. I, I was genuinely surprised to discover nobody gave a shit about this man. No one. Yet yeah, she's still sitting up here caring. I'm just wondering why she was surprised. It's like because, she's delayed. Look, no, because I don't know if she on some what would Jesus do. Yes. But like she said, when she was trying to contact him, she said she was concerned. Yeah. And so she's thinking, well, let me reach out to these people. And they like, we don't give. I think being like this is, especially in a world that's so hard and, and cruel, it, it can be a blessing and a curse. Yeah. And it's like, man. Go ahead, boy. I, I had never met every single family member, but the fact that he was living in his car, the fact that he wasn't bathing and was um, just had disappeared was shocking to me so where was he for those two weeks glad you asked he had checked himself into a behavioral hospital in augusta why not to get help no this is july in georgia it's hot as hell it's sweaty it's damp it's humid it's everything he checked himself into a hospital so he could stop sleeping in his car for two weeks when he checked himself in they took his phone and that's why no one was able to get a hold of him and by no one i mean me 
he checked himself into a hospital so that he could have a bed for a couple of weeks. That's the type of human being that I was dealing with. Part 46, who the fuck did I mean? Can watch so ass, after the whole huh? missing in action debacle where um, he disappeared for a couple of weeks, <laughs> Legion started calling and texting me, telling me that he was ready to come home. Yes, you heard that correct. <laughs> so apparently someone had told him that legally he did not have to leave the house when I kicked him out because it was a marital home and he had just as much right to be there as I did. So he started harassing and calling the shit out of me. He was calling... I mean, 30 times in one hour. He was, fa he was Facebook Messenger calling me. Let me be clear. Facebook Messenger calling me. He was calling me so much. He was messaging me saying, I'm coming home. I'm going to get some money and drive up from Augusta. You have to let me in the house. Um, it's not fair what you're doing. All this other bullshit. I mean, it was, it was nonstop. He would start calling at 7 o'clock in the morning. He would not stop calling until 10 o'clock at night. He was calling so much. Leaving messages, like I said, just straight up harassing me. So I reached out to attorney friends. I reached out to local law enforcement. Local law enforcement informed me, well, technically he's right because he is still legally your husband. Our divorce had not been finalized at this point. The paperwork had been sent in. I was just waiting on the judge to give me her signature, but it hadn't happened yet. So the, lo the local law enforcement did tell me if he comes back, our officers would, would have to let him in the house. You don't have to stay there. They gave me different options. I mean, I was I was trying everything in the book because he is saying, I'm coming back to the house. I told him, do not come. You are not welcome. I'm not letting you in the house. Again, the locks have been changed. The code had been changed. So I told him, if you come to this house, step foot on this property, I'm calling the police and getting you arrested for trespassing. You should know about that. <sighs> he was adamant. He was adamant that he was allowed back in the home. He didn't know the conversations I had with local law enforcement, but somebody was in his ear telling him, no, nah, you can go home because she's not allowed to kick you out. Okay, so I didn't know when he was scheduled to come because he was trying to get the money for the gas to get back to Clinton County. <sighs> I tried everything I could. Basically, what my options were, were simple. Let him in the home oh, and wow. I can stay in the home, put him in a room, um, just have no dealings with him. But again, I don't want to be under the same roof with him. This is what the local police told me. I could have an officer go room to room and let his body cam film the room to see the condition of the house. And if Legion showed up, I would leave the house. I can go to a family member's home and stay there. This is literally in August, right before my lease is up. So I was already moving. I had already secured another home. Awesome. Um, did exactly what I said I was going to do. Move into Cobb County. So I just needed a couple of weeks before I vacate the home. So the other option was, you know, again, have the officer film the home with the body camera. That way it shows what the condition of the home is at the time that he moved in. So if anything gets messed up, I can sue him. What am I going to sue him for? <laughs> but nevertheless... <laughs> Um, or the third option is I can stay there with him, make life miserable. So my plan was the option of have them film the home. I was not staying in the same house with him. I didn't care. Also, there was no guarantee. And I told, I told the officer this, look, if y'all allow him to stay in this house, I am telling you by tomorrow morning, every utility in this house will be off. He will have no running water. He will have no air condition. This place will feel like a sauna. Officer kind of chuckled and was like, again, ma'am, I, I mean, this is one of those domestic situations he is allowed in the home. Okay. So again, I had no idea when he was coming. I was on pins and needles mm. every day. I'm seeing the phone ring, like I said, about 30 times every hour. I'm seeing the messages. I'm seeing this. I had reached out to a police captain. I had reached out to the chief of police. I was trying to get all kinds of help. Like it ain't what you know is who you know. So he eventually tells me I'm going to be there on Wednesday. This is just an example. I'm going to be there on Wednesday. I had been calling a police, uh, excuse me, police captain who was really gracious, really kind and was trying to help me because I was like, bro, I just, I just need two weeks and I'm out of this house. And we already knew he legally could not go to the new house. Mm -hmm. I was trying to see if I could move in early to the new place. The landlord was like, I, I really can't let you. So I felt like I was running out of options. He's saying he's coming. He's saying he's coming. He's adamant he's coming. I guess somebody felt sorry and gave him some gas money so he could drive from Augusta up to Clayton County. So the I think what I would have did if I was in that situation... I would have moved my stuff into a storage or something. Yeah, into a storage. And I probably would either stay with a family member or like stayed in like one of the little weekly hotels. Yeah. That's what I would have did. Empty house. He would not have been he wouldn't have been in there with me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's crazy because he probably would have been like, I've been paying the rent. I don't know. I've been fuck what no, I'm been just doing. saying. Yeah. He would probably stay there. Like I've been paying the bills. Yeah, I would have been out of that bitch. Day before all this goes down, the police captain called me and he informs me, <laughs> he informs me that they ran his name through uh, GCIC, which is a what? database 
that law enforcement agencies use. Come turns out he has a warrant for his arrest. Warm. So the police captain says this changes everything. If he shows up to the house, don't do anything. Call us. I have I will I will have officers to your home and they will simply arrest him. So I know that this is a short part, but I'm going to dedicate the next part to what happened when he showed up to my house. Oh, part 47. Who the fuck did I marry? So here's what happened. This was mid-August. Um, went to work. Went to work as usual. It actually happened on a Friday. I had to look at the dates. It happened on a Friday. Went to work. Um, still, he was calling me, texting me, messaging me that he was on his way. And so I was a bit on pins and needles all day. I was dreading going home. And that is a horrible feeling to dread to go home. Yeah. So um, he had called me and said that he was at the house in the driveway. I guess he had to use the restroom. So he decided to go to the Walmart up the street to go use the bathroom. I wasn't answering phone calls. I wasn't answering text messages. I simply called the police captain. I said, hey, he's saying that he's at the house. The police captain himself drove by the house. But I believe he drove by the house when Legion went to Walmart to use the bathroom. So the police captain was like, I don't see anyone there. But again, if when you get home, if he is there, do not engage. Call us. Okay, no problem. Because <laughs> I got you on speed dial. So I go home. I'm on the phone with both my mother and my aunt on a three-way call. Um, they're both like, oh my God, oh my God. You know, what, what do we need to do? Um, I drive into my subdivision. What he did not know was that he had backed into the driveway up against the garage. Normally I park my car in a garage. But what he didn't know was that at the time I was driving a fleet car. So I wasn't even in my normal car. And I know that he was waiting to see my car, the Nissan Altima that he helped get, um, pull in to the subdivision and then pull in towards my townhome. That didn't happen. Because I'm in a different car, he didn't recognize it. So when I turned onto my street, you see how even though she's a bibbity bop bop, mm -hmm. just ditzy all that, the, the God, the universe is still taking care of her. Mm -hmm. You see it. You can just see it in so many ways. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You may not be the brightest crayon in the box, but it doesn't mean that you won't be taken care of and yeah. you won't figure out how to get out of sticky situations. That's true. As sure as it is hot in Georgia in the summer, that man was sitting in the driveway in his four tours. Okay. So I live not at the time, not far from a cul-de-sac. So when you go straight down, you just turn around the cul-de-sac to come back up. So that's exactly what I did. I went to the corner, turned off so that I can see the house, but he would not have been able to see me. I went ahead and called 911. I was very calm, told them exactly what the captain had told me to say. I was like, my name is, the address is, I need um, police here because my ex-husband is here. He is not supposed to be here. Um, and I feel, feel as though I am in danger. She said, okay, she, you know, again, regular phone call. She said, we're dispatching police to your home. As soon as I hang up, I then call the police captain. He immediately answers the phone. He says, we just got the call. I'm sending four officers your way. Okay, good. Get off the right. phone. Call my mom and my aunt back because they were both like, call us back. Um, <laughs> call them back on three-way. I continue to sit there until I see four officers, four cars pull in and stop just in front of my house. So then I ease up. He gets out the car. I guess, trying to see what's going on. I explained to the officer that walks to my window. I say, you know, this is what's going on. So I was trying to sound extra law enforcement smart. I was like, check him through GCIC. You'll find that he has a warrant out for his arrest for a violation of probation. And the officer kind of smirked because she was like, we know. We are we already uh, checked GCIC. The captain calls. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Um, so anyway, uh, they tell me to sit in the car. They go up to the window of the car and get you know ask him to step out of the car. He does. When he, when he stepped out of the car, Oof. I was like, oh my God. What's my life? I hadn't seen him since the end of June when I met him at the UPS store. And he looked bad then. He was still in the same clothes. When I told you guys when I met him, he was like a size 3X. What got out of the car was easily a medium or large. Girl. Easily. That is how, and it makes sense because, you know, he probably wasn't eating. But set for somebody gave him six dollars for chicken nuggets. But what got out of the car was some was something I didn't even recognize. So he gets out of the car. They arrest him. Um, there was no incident or anything like that. He he was arrested peacefully. They put him in the back seat. My neighbors are all looking like, what is going on? Um, <laughs> and so the officer comes up to me and she said, you know, he's asking to speak to you. Do you want to speak to him? No. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. Oh, I so knew it. I she knew walks it. with me. Keep in mind, she's wearing a body cam. So she walks with me to the window. They put the window down. And I, and I remember looking at him. I was like, I told you not to come. And he said, I just wanted to get my stuff. I just wanted to get the TV. I said, what TV? The TV that you gave me in the divorce? And he was like, yeah, yeah, that TV. And I says, I said, it's mine. 
you gave it to me. I have the fucking text messages proving that you gave me the TV. And I'm trying not to scream because the neighbors are all watching. Um, and he's like, I know, I know. I just, I just needed, I just needed my stuff. I'm sorry. I'll never bother you again. I'm sorry. And so I look at the officer and I was like, you have me out here with four fucking police cars. You have embarrassed me to no end. You have made a fool of me. And you got the audacity to now be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, fuck, you're sorry. So the officer was kind of like, okay. I said, I never want to see you again. He was like, you won't, you won't. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. So I walk off. The officer is like um, going through the, the, the stuff that was in his wallet. They took it out and put it on the roof of the car. So that's his, I'm sorry, the stuff that was in his pants, like his wallet, his keys, they put it on the roof of the car when they had him get out of the car. And so she's just like, um, you know, I said, did you catch all that on body cam? And she said, yeah. I said, he gave me the TV. And she said, yeah, she's like, we're going to take him in and um, we'll get, we'll have somebody look at him because in her words, she said, he's definitely having a mental episode right now in the back seat." And I just shrugged and I was just like, Mike, I, I just said, I just want to be done with him. I just want to be done. I just want to be done. And so she was like, I understand. I, I, I totally get it. So his car is in my driveway. The keys like, and everything are, um, they took it with them because I guess since it was on him, they took it yeah. with them for processing at the jail. All the um, keys. I think that's what, how that works. Cause I didn't see the wallet or the keys afterwards. So, so at this point, four officers leave. I go into the house. Everything's peaceful and calm. A few minutes later, I go outside to check the mail. What's in the mail? But a letter from the court. I open it up. I go into the house because, again, it's hot. I have my wig on. My, my head is all sweaty and stuff. I'm just angry and um, just angry. That, that raised my blood pressure. So I go in the house. I sit on the steps inside the house, and I open up the mail from the judge. And it's my final divorce decree. <laughs> and I'm smiling right now. But y'all, when I got that divorce decree sitting on the stairs, I broke down into ugly Oprah tears. What I broke down. It was as if a huge, a year worth of weight came off of me. I broke down. And I mean, I wailed. I broke down. I broke down. So <laughs> I broke down so bad. Next part. All right, part 48, who the fuck did I marry? So after I finished breaking down, wiped my tears and his car is still in the driveway. I couldn't park in the driveway. So I called the car company. I had called the car company once before um, when he went missing for those two weeks to ask them if they maybe had a tracker on the car and could track it. And the nice gentleman informed me that the tracker had not been giving a signal off for about five months. So he wouldn't really give me details on the car, but obviously the car had not, um, the car payment was not being made on that car. It had not been made on that car for quite some time. So I, you know, he and I split in June, but apparently the car payment wasn't made long before June. Can't speak to that, but he still had the car. So, um, called the car company. I told them, I understand that y'all looking for this for a tourist. And the lady said, yes, you know, or you can make a payment. I said, no, y'all can come get it. Here's the address. What, when do y'all want to get it? And she said, well, I can have a driver come get it tomorrow morning. I said, no problem. That car will be ready for you to get it tomorrow morning. Um, and so the car was repossessed out of my driveway the next morning, Saturday. The driver was there about seven o'clock in the morning. He had the master key for the car, cranked it up, drove it, put it on the tow truck and left. Here's what that now means. When Legion left my house in June, he left with two bags of clothes. Everything else was in my house. At the end of July, or towards the end of July, everything that he had left in my house had been donated to the domestic violence shelter, which means that the only thing that Legion had were the clothes that he had taken with him in the car. When he got arrested in my driveway, all of his clothes were still in the car. And when the car got repossessed Saturday morning, all of the clothes were in there. Which means that when he went to jail, whenever he got out, he only got out with keys to a car he no longer had, a wallet with probably no money in it, and the clothes that were on his back. Everything else was gone. Now, now we can fast forward to what happened around August 29th. So I was scheduled to move August 31st. Remember, I'm moving up to Cobb County. We have been checking the court documents. He had a court date scheduled for around August 29th or August 30th. I don't remember the exact date. The court time was supposed to be around nine o'clock in the morning. My mom was watching the court file, the court filings online. And according to her, because I missed it, um, they showed him on the screen because this was still during Zoom. They showed him on the screen and then he was ushered out of out of the court into like a back area and an attorney spoke on his behalf between the time that he had been arrested and the time of the court date i had never in my life slept so good truthfully never slept so good i was officially divorced i had no ties to him there was nothing in the house of his that that excuse me there was nothing of his that was still in the house i felt free so um when the court date happened and my mom told me what she saw on the zoom 
I was confused. Is he getting out? Is he having to serve time? What's going on? I called the courts. I tried to speak to his attorney um, and his attorney had a horrible attitude and was like, why are you calling me? And I informed him. I said, look, I'm a bit afraid of this man. So can you please just tell me if he is being released or is he going to be kept um, or if he is going to be sentenced to a longer jail term? He said, no, he's not being he's not being kept in a longer jail term because the probation, the warrant had expired. So when the police arrested him, yes, it was a valid arrest, but the warrant had expired. So I believe the warrant had expired like six months earlier, but of course it wasn't put in the system. Which means Thank that God. the court date is see? You Thank just can't see all through how she's being protected. Because if it was put in the system, he would have been in the house or yeah. in her driveway. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 29th, he's going to be released August 29th or August 30th. I'm moving August 31st. <laughs> so my mom was just like, please just spend the night at your aunt's house. Like just spend the night at your aunt's house, then go back to the house during the day. The movers will be there and then just move. So that's exactly what I did because there was concern that he would get out of jail angry and catch an Uber with no money and come back to the house either for retaliation or because he's just in a fucking manic mode. And so that's where he went. Um, I really didn't want to take any chances. It's yeah. just that simple. I did not want to take any chances. I knew that at that point, legally the law's on my side. Y'all are divorced. You have no reason to be at this home. I knew that that's what the police would say, but I wasn't hundred percent sure because truthfully speaking, I did not know this man. We can make all the jokes we want. I did not know this man. Mm -hmm. I thought I knew him, but you never really know a pathological liar. Mm -hmm. So needless to say, he got released August 30th. I went to my aunt's house for the night. August 31st, I went back to the house. The movers were there. They packed me up and we got out of there so quick. I think they packed me up in about two hours. I honestly That's told them there's extra money in this. If you guys can get me packed up, meaning loaded up onto the truck because everything was packed. But I explained to them, this is a domestic situation. I need you guys to move quickly. When I moved out of that house on August 31st, anything that Legion touched, I got rid of. I sold the furniture. I sold <laughs> dining room tables. I donated plates, glasses. I, when I tell you I moved out and I started over, I completely purged my life, completely started over. I mean, I didn't, I was not willing to take a single item into my new home that reminded me of him from the dishes in the kitchen to the towels in the linen closet. When I tell you Amazon and Ross were my best friends, I mean, they were my best friends because I could not fathom moving into a new home, a new space with anything that reminded me of him. Mm -hmm. I sold the bed, got a new bed. Um, if he had bought me clothes, I got rid of them. If he bought me shoes and purses, okay. I kind of kept the heels, but um, <laughs> everything else I got rid of. So. I completely purged my life completely started over from the bottom in terms of just the move what um, about the car i i could not take any piece of him with me could not part 49 who the fuck did i marry so after the whole i moved and um i started over basically completely started over so there was a period of time where different people had reached out to me um people who knew him apparently he was still trying to find a couch to sleep on and so one guy in particular had reached out to me because i guess legion had asked him if he could come and stay with him and his family um because he was homeless and had nowhere to go and so he had lied and told the guy because again he's a liar so he had lied and told the guy that you know i had kicked him out or divorced um i had taken all his money and so that's why he's homeless so the gentleman simply was reaching out to me on facebook to confirm what is actually true and he and i talked because he ended up calling me he and i talked for a while very respectful, really nice guy, um, very compassionate. And so I told him, I was like, I, I said, we are divorced. So I have nothing to do with him. I said, I wouldn't bring him in my house with my family if I were you, but that's just me. Um, and so the guy was like, lady, you know, he didn't say lady, but he was like, lady, you dodged a bullet. He was like, I know you may not see it now, my sister, but you dodged a bullet. You dodged a bullet big time. And so, you know, just in talking to him, he was very encouraging, like, it sounds like you got a good head on your shoulders. It sounds like you a good woman. And no, he was not flirting at all. He was like, it sounds like you a good woman. And I really hope this does not mess you up. Like, don't let him mess you up. Don't let him like diminish your shine kind of thing. And I appreciate that. I did. Because at that time, again, had moved into my new place. 2021 was the worst year I ever had. I'm not saying that so that 2024 can be like holding my beer. Um, but 2021 <laughs> was a dark year. Started out married end of the year, divorce, end of the year with COVID and divorce. Um, and that period of time, that August, September time, 
I felt like I was just walking around like a numb woman. I didn't know if I was coming or going. I didn't know what I was, I didn't know what to do because I felt like I had just been through hell. And it was a period of time where I had to sit down and I had to really, really deal with some stuff that I just simply was not ready to deal with. Things that I, I had to come to grips with that I really wasn't ready to come to grips with. So fast forward all this time, get to December of 2021. Yes, this is where the story does end. Um, get to December of 2021. I am out sick with COVID. I'm not at work. I get a phone call from my coworker telling me that Legion has called our job looking for me and was trying to get information to um, trying to get information on how to reach me. Yes, I had already changed my number. Again, I had already moved, but he knew where I worked. So apparently he had called trying to find me and the person that answered the phone was like, we're not going to give you that information. So he, he said, well, can you ask her to give me a call? I'm just trying to get a hold of her so I can get my stuff. The stuff he's talking about are those tote bags from July. So he was calling, calling, calling. Um, and it was, it was a problem. He was trying to reach out to me on Facebook. He was trying to reach out to family members on Facebook, trying to get me to call him so that he could make arrangements to come get his stuff. The devil is a lie. So my friend Tracy, who came to my rescue again, um, my, my friend Tracy was like, okay, here's what you're going to do. She said, you're going to send him a message and you are going to say these exact words. I sent him a, a text message. She said, and she told me, you're going to send a text message because it's going to be timestamped. And basically the text message says, I do not have your stuff. I, I did not have your stuff. Um, I have nothing that belongs to you. If you continue to, you are disrupting um, the work of my job by calling and asking for me. We have no contact with each other. I will send you a copy of the divorce decree that shows whatever is in your possession you own and whatever is in my possession I own. If you contact me directly or indirectly ever again, I will get a restraining order on you. Now, for those of you who are watching this in 2024, and you're probably like, wow, she's dramatic. Please understand that what I just said, I meant. I mean that. If you ever try to contact me directly or indirectly, I will get a restraining order. I have it in writing. I've always had it in writing. And if I need to rewrite it again in 2024, I will because the, the, the boundaries still stand. Yeah. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the last time I had any contact whatsoever with my pathologically lying ex-husband. Part 50, who the fuck did I marry? So the aftermath. There are some realizations I had to come to um, after the divorce and everything had passed. One, Legion never loved me. He never loved me. He doesn't love himself, so I know he didn't love me. Number two, he didn't even like me. He watched me get excited about things that he knew I was not going to get. And not even just the possession stuff. Like, of course, we know I was, ex I was excited to be the woman whose husband is like, I'm taking my wife to London. I was excited to be the woman whose husband was like, yeah, I bought my wife a brand new BMW X5. You have to understand is all the jokes that we make about the BMW. It was the time and effort that he spent in taking me to dealerships and being sure to put me in the car and test drive the car. And, you know, oh, I can I can see you in this. I like this for you. It seems safe. It was the it was the effort to really make me believe that he was going to get this. Just just for him to fuck with me, the effort in taking me to all these homes to see my face light up as a woman who grew up on welfare, to be able to walk into these four and five bedroom homes knowing that he didn't have any money to buy it. Imagine if he had just been honest and said, hey, I, I, I like in my free time to go to open houses and just see how the other people live. Imagine if he had just said that versus wasting not only my time, but the, the, wasting the time of the realtors who did nothing wrong. There's a level of cruelty to my ex-husband that I had never experienced before. And God knows, I pray I never experience it again. That's the word that, I, that comes to mind when I think of him. He is cruel. To, and, and it wasn't just me. He did it to the ex-wife. So do I trust? No. No. I trust the people who were in my life before him. If we were friends or if we were in a relationship or whatever and I knew you before him, um, I trust you explicitly. But if you're somebody I just met, I don't trust you. I don't. There's no point in me getting on here and saying and making it seem like, oh, I'm so strong. I'm so brave. I struggle big time because on one hand, I want to like someone. On the other hand, I'm immediately thinking, what if it's a repeat? And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I can't go through that again. I can't. Um, every single thing 
in our relationship was a lie. It took me a while to realize every single day this man lied to me. Every single day he lied to me. Every conversation he had was a lie. I will never know how much he lied to me. I'll never know. I, and I, I've made my peace with it. I will never know how deep it really, truly goes. I only know what I experienced and I only know what God allowed me to see. But I'm willing to bet that there's a lot I still don't know. Mm -hmm. When people say, oh, you dodged a bullet, like you just, and I've read some, I've read a lot of the comments on this and people have sent me a lot of the comments. And so I need to make one thing very clear. I am fully aware I dodged a bullet. Yeah. I am so grateful to my God that I did not have that man's child. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if that offends some of you, but no. it's the truth. I'm grateful that we didn't buy a house and that I'm not financially tied to him in any way, shape or form. But I am also grateful for the fact that there are things about my ex-husband that I discovered in terms of how he is when it comes to other women. And I'm grateful that God has kept me and protected me. That's all I'm going to say. Hmm. So when I started out making this series and I, and I made the decision to tell my story, my motive was I just want to help one person. If there's a woman out there who's like, God, you know, I want to be married and I met this guy and something don't seem right, but you know, maybe it's not that bad. My advice is, honey, just go ahead and do your research because I can honestly tell you being single sucks. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, sometimes it sucks, but being married to the wrong person hmm. is a type of hell. No one should have to go. Oh. You should not have to be married to someone that does not like you. You should not have to be married to someone that doesn't even love you. And I know what that is like. I know what it's like to be told, hey, babe, you know I love you. And yet, I swear, I think that man sat back in the recliner with his WWE Championship Roman Reigns belt and laughed his ass off at me every day. Like, damn, she really believed it. <laughs> I do. I really do think that. Um, my radar was broken because I am an intelligent woman. And I know that I know better. And I still sometimes ask myself, how the fuck did you let this happen? How did you let this be your story? All because at the time I wanted it to be my turn and I, and I hoped it was my turn. And when people say, well, what do you mean by that? I just meant, we all see it, whether it's social media or real life, we all see where the woman has, she done been through some stuff and she finally met someone who appreciates, loves and respects her. And it is a beautiful thing. I had hoped that when I met him, it was my turn for that. And instead, instead of being obedient, I wanted to be right and I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And the cost of that decision was heavy. The toll of reliving this whole scenario was heavy. It, it, it was. I'm almost surprised at how hard it was to actually finish this playlist. Not because I couldn't remember stuff. I probably remember way more details than what I actually put out. But it's just mm -hmm. the fact that it's like I'm reminding myself, how did you let this happen? So... Therapy is real. Therapy helps. Stella Rosa Black helps too. Um, <laughs> and yes, I will one day get to London. I will Aww. get my dark blue BMW X5 with cognac interior. Um, I believe I will get those things. Just got to get them a different route. So yeah. this... thank you all for being on the playlist of who the fuck did I marry? I promise I will go live and I will let you all know when I go live so that we can have a wine night full of questions and answers. Yo, this was a fucking movie. It was. It, and even the ending, you know how you watch a movie, you get to the end, and it's just like you want to cry or something like that? Yeah, it was um, fulfilling. You know how sometimes you get those movies, it's not. but um, Somebody definitely going to pick her up. Yeah. Um, I actually saw something that said she is going to London. They said that she posted that she is going. And um, What about the car? Anything about the car? I saw something. Say Come on, BMW. I don't know if it's true. Um, I think somebody said that they reached out to her, but I don't know if that's true. So Damn. let me just say that. But you know what? I think that, you know, when you go through things in your personal life, sometimes you go through things, it's hard for you to tell that story. And it really takes you doing the shadow work. And, um just sitting back swallowing it the fact that she was able to share her story and she's still having moments of 
how did you get yourself here? I just, you know, I tip my hat to her for the fact that she did tell the story because it is other people out here that can get caught up with, I ain't gonna say a legion, but with legion. Like if not, you the same way how she got caught up. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if the two ex-wives would have told the story? Yeah. It could have saved her. Yeah. So I and go just ahead. the the many lives that she's gonna protect and say could even potentially save just by putting her story out. Like this is a viral story. It hit millions. Yeah. Who knows who lives it's gonna impact. You know what I'm saying? Just her yeah. telling her story. And I appreciate her not, you know, um, as far as what I could see, not trying to make herself look like what she wasn't. Like, not lying or whatever. Yeah, there were parts in the story where she she looked dumb. Yeah. But the fact that she was willing to put it out there, yes, people are going to judge her. Um, but that's just what comes with it. Yeah. And I also think it's important, because um, I told Nick, and this is something that I've shared before, um, that's something that I do for my kids, y'all. And my kids, they're grown, you know, for people that are new here. But when my kids were young, especially my daughter, I would just do things for her. Like even her dad do things. He'll send her like an edible arrangement or roses. It's like we buy her jewelry. And it's like the reason I did that is because I was like, I don't want somebody to be able to lure her in in the same way with my son you know don't think like if a female was to do this for you like oh shit like she really down for me so i think people need to take more pride in doing things for themselves actually planning to do those things make a plan so that you can take yourself wherever you want to go so that you can have those nice things that you're hoping somebody will swoop in and give you like don't depend on somebody like that and not rushing your process in anything because yeah. this can apply more to relationship more than just relationships because i've had moments where it's like i really want something so i try to manifest it or or make it happen or force it into my reality and then i have to clean up the mess afterwards yeah so yeah Anyways, uh, comment below your thoughts. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in with us and watching this long -ass vid these long-ass videos. <laughs> thank you for supporting us, and uh, we'll catch y'all next time. Peace. Peace. You don't really need a lot of money, bitch. Because you know what it is, you know what it should be like. You never need a man for what don't be valid, bitch. You live it in your truth, only when you feel it. That's why I'm tuning into your body,